Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Life's Legends, a podcast where we talk about the stories that have shaped and guided us through life. This month, I am here with my best friend, Cliff, and we're talking about the the video game, The Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask. Say hi, Cliff. Yo. So, in the beginning of these podcasts, we do a little bit of intro. So, we already have done your name. You're Cliff. Yes. Uh, how old are you? 25. Almost 26. Nice. What's your favorite animal? Orcas. Good pick. Killer whales. Yeah. The gangsters <laughs> of the ocean. Yeah. Um, what do you currently do? What's your current occupation? Uh, I work in a print shop. Nice. Nice. Uh, what's your dream? I want to be better tomorrow than I am today. In some kind of way. So it's like a skill or like a personality growth. So there's some kind of, just like get a little better every day. Nice. Yeah. So in any kind of way, it's a broad improvement on the micro level, which is cool. Thanks, man. It's a good one. So we're here to talk about Majora's Mask. But before we get into that, I like to be able to shout out different stories that you might be engaged in right now or want people to to know about. So what is the story that you want to shout out? Uh, I think this game, this, it's a good game, but it's just, you know, get used to Zelda before you. This is not the good dip your toes in game. And I think one of the best ones for that would be uh, Wind Waker. So play that first and then maybe hop back into this one. Okay. So you think... If I didn't know anything about Legend of Zelda, Wind Waker first, and then come here. Wind Waker, Ocarina of Time, okay. Breath of the Wild. It's just this one's weird, and we're going to talk about why it's weird. Sure. It's just a sure. weird starter. I think you'd agree. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. I mean, I've, I haven't actually played Wind Waker, but I've played Ocarina of Time, and this is definitely weird comparatively. Um, but yeah, we're obviously going to talk about that. Um, later. My shout out, I wanted to stick in the video game and even the Nintendo realm. Uh, my shout out is a video game called Luigi's Mansion that is my favorite video game ever. It's a wild pick. I know. <laughs> it's a good game. It's a I wild pick. Love it. The number one. Yeah, number one. I just really like the game. I like the story. It's the perfect level of spooky for me. Not a very big spooky guy. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, I just love it. So I definitely, if you're into Nintendo games, go that way. I actually, any of the three, the middle one, Luigi's Mansion 2, not as great. Uh, but still interesting and good. Also a 3DS game. So if you're playing Majora's Mask, you have the equipment. But probably just get a GameCube so that you can do Wind Waker and Luigi's Mansion. Anyway, that's my shout out. So, turning to Majora's Mask, the topic of this video, um, what made you choose uh, Majora's Mask for this video? Uh, I like Zelda a lot. It's one of my favorite video game franchises, and I think it's the most interesting Zelda to talk about. Nice. It's the most to get into here. And we'll definitely get into that. When did you first play the game? So, this is the one that... I like uh, <clears throat> I couldn't beat this one because too scary, too scary when I was a little guy. Okay. Not not like too spooky, but just too anxious. I was too anxious with the mechanics, mm. and I just kept finding myself coming back to it over and over again until one time it clicked. And then when it clicks, it's really cool. Nice. But I think some people needed to click, and it didn't click for me for a while. It was the like the last Zelda game I beat. Wow. Okay. Nice. Yeah, but you so you played it young, but just weren't didn't hit, didn't make it through it Couldn't, until later. Not even like not even very far. Oh, okay. Deku, Woodfall. Wow. wow. Okay. I just I, it was. Yeah. Too much. Time mechanics are stressful for sure. <laughs> um, you said it, brother. Ironically, I didn't. I thought I was going to be bothered by that, but wasn't as much. But we'll talk about that later too. Um, 
So, we have reached our first listener question as we exit the intro section, and that's, what is your favorite side quest in Majora's Mask? So, not, um, not any of the main dungeons, but any of the side quests. Of all of them, what was your favorite one to experience? Okay. Do you want to go first? you want me to go first? I can go first if you want. Okay. Um... My favorite was Romani and the Aliens. That's the best one. That's my favorite as well. <laughs> Is it? Mm-hmm. That's great. I, <clears throat> rolling up there, I, I, so I came in, I didn't talk to Romani the first time in the morning. Yeah. I just came on the night of the first, the, or the first day's night when they're there and I just see them come down and I'm like, what is that? Oh really? Okay. Why are they like floating in? Yeah. On on the the house, and I tried to like hit them. It was so interesting. It was freaky. It was really interesting. I I really like. I don't know if you have anything else to say about that, but I just think I I love how you can uh, experience the story of this game a lot, and I think it's cool that you got into it like that because I feel like you're not. I feel like you're supposed to find Romani at the end of the first like on that third day when the boulder is gone naturally but you must have powder kegged in there yeah after you did the second temple and yes. uh that's cool i like that you just you didn't go over there or like you didn't just get i didn't go over there at all mm-hmm. before wow. i went to the north part Snowhead. okay okay i yeah i didn't even make it down there whoa i i so at the beginning, I must have been much more linear-minded. Yeah. Because I went straight into the swamp. I did not divert at all. Yeah, because I feel like they lead you like when, on your way to the Deku Palak Woodfall. Yeah. I feel like they're really encouraging you to go there to find out about that area. Yeah. Mess with the Gorman brothers and stuff. But yeah, that's cool that you didn't find it till later, which I love that this game will do. But uh, I, yeah, I think... Just the fact that aliens are in this game is awesome. I think it's like, yeah, it's like they're based on the Flatwoods cryptid, which I think is kind of a cool detail. Those aliens, huh. they're like ghost alien monsters. Yeah. Um, I think the sisters are two really cool characters. Uh, I like them both a lot. I was like, Romani, you really want to save her? Yeah, and it's like the I like consequences Romani. for that side quest are so bad. <laughs> like, a yeah. child gets lobotomized. The older sister has lost her livelihood and she's like devastated because the sister like begged her to listen that this exact thing would happen yeah and so to see her like at her dinner table like destroyed is crazy yeah it is messed up so yeah so you really it's a lot of stuff in this game like the more you break down like what you're sitting with you're like this is this is brutal yeah that's funny that we have the same favorite side quest. Lover's Quest was close, though. Was Lover's Quest close for you? Like, what I were lo- you weighing against this one? Or were you just like, this is for sure my favorite? That was for sure my favorite. Okay. I... That was the one that, like, when I, like, encountered the pieces, yeah. I was the most shocked. <laughs> yeah. I was just like... Because c- the way I encountered it was mm-hmm. really weird. Like... Yeah, yeah. I have no idea what's happening, and I'm trying to hit them, and they're not, like, attacking me. Yeah. But they don't, they're not affected by me either when I'm trying to hit them with the sword, or they bounce, but. Yeah, I bet that that's super uncommon, that, like, that being the immediate engagement with that plot line. Yeah. Yeah, I actually didn't even know that the boulder is gone on the third day. I, yeah, I that, never, that dude with the pickaxe actually he, he gets, gets it done. It. <laughs> he gets it done. <laughs> he takes a minute, but yeah, <laughs> I yeah I didn't even know that. Yeah, yes, because I didn't find it that way. That is really cool about this game mm-hmm. that you can find it in different ways. Oh um, yeah. But so let's get into the meat. Let's get into the main section about what this story is. And this this being a video game, this is the first video game that that I've covered on the podcast Mm -hmm. um and so this being a video game is a little bit different in the meat and the medium category in the the medium probably has a little more almost um yeah we'll see we'll see as we talk about it um but so let's talk about the characters every story has a protagonist and an antagonist the protagonist of this story is link what do you think about link do you have any thoughts yeah i mean link is typically um 
just the player insert character. You're just kind of like supposed to project onto him yeah. your own wills. But I think the narrative around the story makes this link a little more interesting than uh, than previous links. I think the first standout thing is it's really cool. I mean, we're probably going to compare to Ocarina a little bit because like those two really they go hand. This is a sequel to Ocarina, but yeah. like in that game, he's like the hero of time. He's destined to go on these quests, and it's like. This was the first Zelda game to kind of be like, no Ganon, no Triforce, no Master Sword. So it makes for a very like less, this Link is like less, like he does less cool stuff, but it makes him more cool. Like this Link, like they really hit home that he's like a child. And like he struggles, this Link struggles more than I think any Link that we've probably both experienced playing Zelda. Like the game starts yeah, with him probably. getting jumped mugged his yeah. horse is gone he's uh and he doesn't get it back and he gets cursed and that was like that's one of the first moments that's interesting because you're like this link is like he is a little kid because like if you come off of ocarina he's like the coolest guy ever and he still is the coolest guy ever right. you're like he's just a little guy he's just a sweet little guy and like the way he screams when he gets turned into a deku is like yeah it's hard and the transformation itself looks so painful to experience yeah. I think that's cool. I don't know if you want to... Like, I, we could do more Link, but I don't know if you have anything to say to that. No, I... Yeah, he's definitely a player insert character. But more of a character, I think, in this game, like you said, than most Zelda games. I still name mine Luke. Okay. Did you... Do you name... I'm Link forever. That you guy, just Link. I always okay. Link, yeah. 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 I named mine Luke. Okay. I... I usually just name it Link. I have in the past. I don't know if I just went on autopilot for a minute. But <laughs> yeah. it was a little weird throughout the story to hear characters be like, Luke, come this way. And yeah. I was like, mm, this feels artificial. Because it's Link, right? I guess it yeah. feels like Link. Right, yeah. It's That's not, good, guys. It's not get me. in the comments. What do you call Link? Sure. Link. Get in the comments. Or your own name. It's or weird another rules. name. Yeah. Bob. Yeah. Gordo. <laughs> Steven. <laughs> Enrique. I'm yeah. really... Yeah, I'm a lot of Spanish links Spanish names. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I think... I don't know, because that, that guy... That, I don't know, Link has always felt like Link to me, whereas, like, Pokemon trainers, I get it. Call him whatever you want, but... Sure. I've always called Link, Link. Yeah. Well, I think he is a distinct character, especially in this game. Um... Same thing with Epona. Like, I've always called Epona, Epona. Yeah. You can name her sometimes. Oh. you can, can you name her in this game? No. I didn't think so. No. Yeah. But, yeah, I I enjoy... I think Link's a great conduit to experience the story. Mm -hmm. um, That's another thing. Like, I think the mechanic of this game, one thing it does really well, is, like, with the whole time loop situation, in my mind, like, the thing that I've always projected on this Link is, like, this is a hero who really just can't help himself like he's so driven to save people he'll go out of his way every time to do it even though he knows it's all going to turn back like in a couple days like he literally can't yeah. help himself from jumping into things when you're playing yeah i don't know if you're linked just blew by everything and everyone but i like watched a lot of people die yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, sort of and watch a lot of people die. I'm sure you can play the character like that, like the Link who knows it will all go back, so he's ambivalent to everything, and he just kind of yeah. keeps it pushing, doing what he needs to do. Well, if you played the game just simply linearly, yeah. right? Just went to the four main dungeons and, you know, did it, that's a wrap. Mm -hmm. It would kind of be like you've ignored everything else going on. Yeah. And, and you would kind of be playing Link as if it's just like a, we need to get to the spot. It doesn't matter because time is going to reset. Yeah. And interestingly, you will go against the themes of the story. And I think your Link will suffer for that. It would be like just purely mechanically would be an interesting challenging run. But yeah. But yeah, you'd be missing out on a lot of cool stuff if you did that. And actually, a lot of it is essential. Like you need. Yeah. Like you need to get the, the Garo mask from the Gorman brothers. You do need to check out that ranch eventually. Like you yeah. do. You get a couple bottles, like, you will struggle at the Great Bay. You will yeah. be taking a lot of trips, so, like, I feel like it's really heavily incentivized that this link does like to help people. Yeah. 
Yeah, and he's a hero. Yeah. Like that he can't help himself. I like the the way you said that. He just can't help himself but to save these people, mm-hmm. even though he knows it'll be reset. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, that's something to think about. <laughs> um, something to chew on, folks. Something to chew on. <laughs> so, as I said, stories, protagonist, antagonist. The antagonist... We'll start with St- with Skull Kid. Okay. How do you feel about Skull Kid as an antagonist? Uh, it's, it's weird to... S- oh, go ahead. I don't know whether to separate him from That's Majora what I was just gonna in this say, conversation yeah. or not. Because it's hard to say where does Skull Kid end and where does Majora begin. Right. In this, like, concoction of villain that we've created. Yeah. So what do you want to do? You want to go just Skull Kid and... Or just mix them both for now? Let's just mix them... We can start with Majora. Okay. I do whatever you want. Talk about the combination of Skull Kid and Majora and what how they serve as an antagonist to the story and how you feel that plays into this story in a good way, bad way, or otherwise. Okay. Um I okay, how connects to the story? Oh so like the main thing that will be commented on about Majora is um his lack of an interpersonal relationship with Link, which I think is very rare. And I think I like what they did with Majora a lot because if you're going to do like, there's a a big clash against Link, I don't feel like, I mean, anything's possible, but like, I feel like the prestige and the cool and the history that Ganon has, like, you're not going to be able to top that easily. So like, they did something different with Majora. I think it's really cool. And I like, I almost like more that um, there's no, like there's no big back and forth between these two characters because Majora feels like this pure force of like chaos and evil. I think it's cool that that villain has zero interest in you at all, but you are constantly seeing their influence in the world. Like every single place you go, like worlds are suffering because of what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you're not even a thought in this guy's head. But he is creating devastating damage all the time. Like yeah. above you, below you, around you. Everything is crazy. That's how I'd feel about Majora. Hmm. I think Skull Kid's cool because he's just uh, like a sad, lonely little kid who's just, you know, who is like a punk. Like he does. He's a little trickstery. Yeah kind of guy but like he gets completely overtaken in this symbiotic relationship where like he slowly loses himself yeah but it's it's cool yeah and in that way I think at least from the story's perspective at least in my thought kind of opens himself up to be taken advantage of by Majora because of the he, he already has this trickster kind of like uh, like personality innocently I think is just Skull Kid yeah like innocent enough but he still is this Kinda, lonely yeah he's he's still lonely mm-hmm. um and this well, is well did you uh, did you do the all night mask quest did you hear like that lore drop I did not oh okay so if you get the all night mask which allows you to stay up all night yeah you can go to the grandma at Stockpot Inn and she'll tell you a story uh and it's basically, the story is the four giants and Skull Kid were all best friends. And um, they split up, each taking like a quadrant of the four. Yeah. And that they were each guarding their land, which led Skull Kid to be like lonely, overtaken by loneliness. And so he goes around kind of spreading mischief. And um, that ends up getting him like completely kicked out of Termina, like with death threats. So. That's huh. kind of like Skull Kid's story. Wow. Yeah. And so that's why he's like out in the field. He's barely tiptoeing his way back in to yeah. the only home he knows. And that's like what the one cutscene we really get showing him at all is, is him kind of curled up in the rain with Tattle and Tail. Right. Huh. That puts some other things about the ending into perspective. Mm-hmm. Like his kind of like talking to those giants, like... He's yeah. been friends with them. Yeah. Yeah. 
And it kind of connects him to Link in a really interesting way, too, because they're just, like, at the end of, like, like we said before, at the end of the day, like, as huge and epic as the story was, it was just two very lonely, very small children. Because Link, like, he starts the game, which is, again, very different from Ocarina, on, like, a personal quest, which is, like, his own thing. Like, he's looking for a friend, which is implied to be Navi. Yeah. Yeah, I saw some of that uh, when I was, like, doing a little bit of research. Mm-hmm. And how, like, the, that loss of Navi has maybe compelled this hero in, in the search of a friend. Mm-hmm. Um, There's two, two little guys looking two for friends. Two little friendless guys just <laughs> yeah. want to be... That, and that makes me really like the ending scene of the carving in the log mm-hmm. um, with the two of them aren't friends. Yeah. It's another point to link to, like to think about now that we're, like I'm saying that is, it's kind of interesting because that link had every right you would imagine to just cruise until he died. Like he could just you know yeah. live off Hyrule's riches and just be. But like I feel like living a life as intense as that game, like it does, it pushes you to keep going. Or like he couldn't just rest. It's another like he couldn't help himself. He had to go do something. Yeah. Heroic again. Yeah, that's interesting. I, yeah, that's really cool lore that I totally missed <laughs> that's about <hard>. Skullkin. <laughs> um, cause, uh, the All Night Mask, uh, was the only mask that I had to look up how to get. Yeah. Which is really impressive. I like that's, <laughs> I think yeah. there's a lot of masks that like shit, like when I played as a kid, like, it just, I would, it would have taken me, it did take me like weeks to like find certain masks. I got, very lucky on the the dude dancing on top of yeah. a mushroom. I got extremely lucky. Yeah, Kamigoro, that's a huge one. That's... I passed him at exactly the right time and was like, nope, I'm going to see what that is. <laughs> yeah. So there the bomb. You stumbled upon the the bomb mask robbery like pretty naturally, yeah. right? Yeah. That was like one of the like very early in the game. Mm-hmm. I I found them. Yeah. That was before I even went into the Deku forest wow it was early but yeah i just stumbled into the robbery that's pretty cool it's like yeah and it is cool like that those encounters feel like organic Mm -hmm. which is really cool but anyway we're talking about characters um but yeah do you think so do you think majora and on the whole, Majora slash Skull Kid will say, do they serve as a good villain? As yeah. a good antagonist? I think so. Yeah, okay. I mean, I do too, but... Something a little different. Yeah. I, I, and I think you're totally right when you talk about how if you are trying to follow up this storied match between Link and Ganon, mm. you, you almost do need to have, like, go a different way. Mm-hmm not kind of play into that same kind of yeah thing. there's just like there were i mean there were i can't imagine a better story to tell in hyrule with the exact same engine with the exact same like i they really yeah. nailed it with ocarina yeah like, absolutely stood the test of time is one of yeah. the coolest games ever oh yeah definitely i remember yeah this is not about ocarina but yes <laughs> it is very good um so there are obviously many other characters in in Majora's Mask so I'm just going to kind of open it up what other characters do you want to talk about what ones stood out to you Um, where do you want to go from here Okay. Uh, first of all the most infamous, the greatest character introduced in this game I think uh, I just feel like Tingle is perfectly (laughs) emblematic of what this Zelda was and I love that he was a mainstay and it's just there's something like it could only be here that like a tingle would be born yeah and it makes me happy that he's been around for so long he's become like such a legend in this world this is my first tingle experience yeah (laughs) yeah this is the first tingle experience yeah i like on the whole Mm -hmm. uh i've heard things about tingle's existence (laughs) yeah um not great things no um but i didn't mind him yeah like I didn't mind him in this game at all. He, ju- I just bought a bunch of maps from him. Yeah, 
He was quite helpful. Good guy, just a guy in his mid thirties trying to trying to make it. Something's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm like every time I talk to a tingle, yeah. I assume they're the same tingle. It's the same tingle, yeah. Yeah, just everywhere. I great. You know what? Great could could be all. <laughs> I believe it for this game, but I'm just there's a lot of them yeah. everywhere. I. If I fast travel from a tingle to the Romani's ranch, Romani's ranch save point, mm -hmm. there's a tingle right there. You're right. Is it the same? Did he, he, did he on fly on that balloon yeah. just at super speed? It's <laughs> a good Maybe. question. I got a lot of questions for tingle. That's one of them. Mm -hmm. He is odd. <laughs> yeah, he's odd. <laughs> he's a weird little guy. Yeah. Did you um? Did you do the boat care like the, the boat guy's uh little heart piece quest? No. Okay, that guy is his dad. Like when he's complaining about what? his son, that's like a little goofball idiot. Like if you take a picture of Tingle with the pictograph and show it to him, he's like, "Oh my sweet baby boy." He's weird, but <laughs> I, I like him. <laughs> he's not so bad. I can't. Or the Deku King. You can also take a picture of the Deku King, and he'll give you a heart piece for that. Oh. It's like everything has like a cool little option where it's like everything can be approached in so many fun ways. Yeah. I'm going to be honest, I abandoned the, the picture thing immediately. Yeah, I mean, that's really. You can't do a lot with the picture. No, card. I just. Yeah. I stopped. I forgot about that entirely. Mm -hmm. I, um. I think it's just like you take the boat ride, you get a cool picture of a yeah. frog or something. and That's, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> right. I was like, look at that octopus. Yeah. Click. Yeah, I um, I, I, Tingle's so weird. Does I, he think he's like an elf? I think it's like a big fake it till you make it situation with okay. Tingle. But he's not an elf. Mm, he's I, waiting for his fairy. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, yeah, I don't but know. But he's clearly like a 30-year-old man. Yeah, 35. 30, 35, sorry. I didn't yeah. mean to shave off a couple. <laughs> yeah. I just... I don't know. It's so. Uh, it's just cool. It's just fun. Like, yeah. Just like it could just be a map guy. I just love the little extra effort that he is in a balloon thirty feet in the air. <laughs> that you have to shoot out of yeah. the sky. I love that he smoke bombs and it's, like stays there. <laughs> <laughs> He's great. Yeah. Tingle's fun mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Can't can't vouch for any other Tingle experiences, but this one was fun mm -hmm. and a little disturbing. Yeah. Um, who else do you want to talk about? Um, well, when I was researching this game, I, I think we talked about this earlier, but I, I got really into this apprentice side quest I thought was just a cool little detail. It's like when you go, when you start the game, probably like one of the first NPCs you'll see is like the guy on the platform looking up at the moon, right? And he's like, it's getting pretty close. It's looking pretty bad. And then that guy's gone from there. And then if you do the Great Bay uh, Skulltulla house, He'll give you a reward, but the reward is different each day. I think the narrative, like, is just like the way they tell that story. I think is interesting because the first day he'll either give you the bigger wallet or a hundred rupees, and he's like, "This is my life savings. Um, you can have this. Like, take it." I, and then the second day he says the same thing, but he gives you fifty rupees, and the third day he gives you twenty, and he's kind of like, oh, "I'm sorry. This is like this is what I got, but you can have it for doing this." I just think that's a cool little. Like, that's a whole story told, and we're not in the mechanics yet, but I think that's, like, through gameplay yeah. mechanics, it's interesting because we could only know that experiencing a story this way because we know exactly how much his life savings in, and we know what his job is. So he was just, like, an honest guy trying to make an honest living, starting an apprenticeship, but then, like, with the realization of the moon coming in, he's, like, slowly, he's just burning through his entire life savings. But then there's also a cool little moment where he's, like, whatever he has left... When he meets Link, he gives the rest. Like, just go crazy, kid. Like, have fun yeah. for the last two days. We'll be alive. I think huh. that's cool. Yeah, that is cool. And, it, yeah, it's a unique thing that's only this game can do. Yeah. And they didn't even do it in the 3 I think in the 3DS, if you beat the second house, they just always give you the wallet. Okay. Yeah, I got the but wallet. But maybe after that, they will. It. But, yeah. I definitely... I got the wallet when I beat it. But mm -hmm. I forget what day I beat it on. Yeah. Um, 
Because I needed something from that house. I needed the wallet for the all, all night mask. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Because I needed to be able to carry 500 rupees. Hmm. Um, that's it. That's yeah. Why. But those are the two. Who do you want to get into? What's, what do you got? Uh, let's talk about the happy mask salesman. Okay. Because this is the most intriguing character to me. That makes sense. That makes so much sense for you. I I just have a lot of questions. Yeah. I don't have a lot of answers. And, you, and nobody does. <laughs> nobody has a lot of answers. <laughs> I just have a lot of questions. I think... I think that's actually like a great part of the game. I love how many questions this game proposes to you. And it's like, there is no way. Like, yeah. I think that's why it's like one of the most interesting Zelda's to talk about. And also like... As you can imagine, the biggest fan theories of the game oh, I'm of sure. all time. Yeah. Yeah, I just. How did he come into possession of Majora's Mask? Yeah. He really wants it back. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, understandably. But why? Uh, sure. Things are bad <laughs> when that thing gets loose. But it's a great question. How did he get it? Why have it? Yeah. Why? Yeah. You're, you're you're a mask salesman. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't I, get rid of that one. Yeah. I, he definitely. Yeah. I just he's interesting. He's so interesting. He's like entrusts Link to get it back, and then at the end, like once everything's resolved with Majora, yeah, like disappears. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to quickly touch on yeah, his Ocarina right. quest. Um, all that we know in that game is he was the ha he was a mass salesman in that game, kind of a, kind of a you know a slower side quest most people don't do. But like when the time skip happens, he skips town, he's gone, and then you see him again at the end credits. So it's like he just he's always he's always making moves. He's always yeah. getting he's in weird spots. And uh, the thing that's like I think super freaky immediately is he's. It's just like there's this weird intimate relationship created immediately with this character because he is aware that you went back in time. He's the only character. Like it really just yeah. feels like it's you, Skull Kid, and this guy. And then everything else is just like in question. But like he knows what's up as well. And he's at the, he's the very beginning and the very end. So Yeah. And he's somehow... He's able to distinguish, one, that you're not really a Deku. Yeah. And, like, take that mask off. Mm -hmm. Teaches you the song of healing. Knows the song of healing. So. Yeah. And his mask's also, Which is yeah. very important. I, many times, uh, like, not, or not Navi. Tail? Do I have tail? Uh, tattle. Or, you have tattle. tattle. I have tattle. Mm -hmm. Tattle, I, like, ask tattle about whatever I'm looking at. And they're like... This guy sure looks like he could use some healing <laughs> yeah. in like red bold print. Yeah, I'm like, so you want the song then? <laughs> yeah, um, but it's definitely uh, it's used all the time. Mm -hmm. But he just seems like such a it it is it does feels like it's you him and Skull Kid mm -hmm. that are are aware of this looping and everybody else isn't. Yeah, he. Yeah, he's very he's just really interesting to me because he has this air of like being outside of this conflict. Yeah. As like an observer almost. Yeah, he doesn't feel I, I you can't gauge I can't gauge well where he falls on the good and evil scale at all. Yeah. There's like his face is definitely purposely designed to be like that. His everything about uh -huh. his look is like I could be any like you just I have no idea what his intentions are with anything. Yeah. Like, at the end of the game, he seems, like, almost disappointed that the evil is gone from the mask. So, it's like, wh why? <laughs> why, though? Yeah. Yeah, and is that, like, a, this is no longer the same thing? Like, yeah. this, this mask that held a lot of value to him, mm -hmm. did it hold the value because Majora was in it? I <laughs> Oh. And why? Yeah. Then, if that's the case, because then you would be ecstatic mm -hmm. that this like curse is no longer in this thing. Yeah. That you were clearly concerned about being out here. Yeah. 
Well, maybe not clearly. I don't know. It's just, he's really interesting to me. I really liked, liked seeing him. Um, I also... Let's talk, let's talk about Tattle and Tail. Okay. Real quick, though, I want to say nope, I think it's cool. Ahead. The, the Happy Mass Salesman. Uh, just another thing to throw into, like, his freak factor is he's the only character who will... Um, and, like, this is a common... Like, this is just a fun major fact, but he's one of the only characters when you click next on the speech bubble that he'll be in a completely different pose in a completely different position. And that just felt like a very, like, cool, intentional choice. It's like you huh. press A, he's, like, going like this, like, holding his head. Press A again, he's shaking Link. Like, press A. Oh. Like, like, he just, like, moves in a way that no other character moves. Like, you click A on anybody else's text box, he'll just stay where they are or, like, stay in the animation they're in. Yeah. Or, like, it'll play out like you're actually talking to that person where... Right. He's like, there's hard cuts between every animation he has. Yeah, he does. It's like a jump. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. He's jumping around. Yeah, it's cool. It's so cool. It's very cool. Yeah. Um, I have just so many questions. <laughs> yeah. I, um, and also his quotes are yeah you've met with a terrible fate haven't you it's huge yeah and at the end his line about like departing you know it doesn't have to be forever but yeah he's like, I don't know he just, he may, he's, you just want to know everything about him and they give you like the perfect little amount I think to just stoke the flames of curiosity forever the that ending quote and I don't actually have it I don't have it I don't um, have it 100% but we, I know the the idea I guess it almost seems like, and maybe I shouldn't enter this arena if I don't know the actual quote, but it to me, I thought he was like, it doesn't have to be forever, mm -hmm. but sometimes it is. Hmm. Maybe I, I could be totally wrong. Yeah, I'd want to look it up just to be I'll sure. Just, let's talk about Tattle and Tail. Oh, Tattle and Tail? You got tail thoughts? I don't have any tail thoughts. <laughs> let's talk about Tattle. <laughs> I don't know. Tails, uh, my tail thoughts are uh, essentially like it feels like a hostage and that makes me sad. Okay, I agree. Um, but I like after Navi, which is the the fairy I'm accustomed to from playing Ocarina of Time, mm -hmm. uh, Tattle is very different. Yeah. And the title is a character? Is that what Yeah, it is? yeah, that's yeah. the one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, uh... And I really like that. Yeah. It's I want to be clear, I'm not a Navi hater. Like, I don't... I'm okay. not on that bandwagon to jump. But I'm just like, Navi was just like... She gives you the facts. It's like, hey, listen. I know what that is. But, uh, yeah, Tattles. Tattles a good... Like, a good middle step, I think, to great Zelda companions. Like, a necessary step to get to... Midnas and stuff, which we'll talk about later when you play those games. But yeah, I like Tattle. I mean, to cut you off there, you can give your Tattle thoughts. No, I just like Tattle. I like yeah. the the character. The, the Tattle's a character. Mm -hmm. um, I like that. I do like their immediate not at all bond with each other where it's just a lot of trash talk about how lame you are, but then the door closes and she's like, hey, listen, I, uh, we should team up. We're going to get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do love it in the beginning that, that he is like, so I said some things before. <laughs> <laughs> and they could have been taken different ways. Yeah. But, I mean, we're stuck now, so let's let's help each other. Yeah, she's, I think it's a cool, I think she's a cool, she's just, yeah, she's better. Like, they're improving the companions. I, I like Tattle. A little, just, just a little bit of sass. Put a little bit of sass in there. Not to go back to this, but to go back to this, you're right. Um, the quote from the Happy Mass oh, Salesman yeah. is, Whenever there is a meeting, a parting is sure to follow. Mm-hmm. However, that parting need not last forever. Okay, yeah. Whether a parting be forever or merely for a short time, that is up to you. Mm -hmm. And it's, that is a really good quote. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. It's another one of those times, like, this game is really good about knowing when to be quiet. I think the game's, like, completely quiet when he says that to you. Yeah. And I, it, it really, it hits good because of it, I think. It's just like, when that guy speaks, you really, you just want to stop and listen. Yes. Yeah. That's why it's so interesting to me. Mm -hmm.
Because I do want to stop and listen yeah. every time. Yeah. That's a really good quote. Yeah, right? Mm. I knew, I remember when I was playing, like when I got to the end, mm-hmm. reading it and being like, that's a really good quote. Yeah. Um, but obviously I forgot the moral. <laughs> <laughs> so, how good was it? <laughs> Alright, who else do you want to talk about? Uh, hmm. I, um, I like the Ranch Sisters. We talked about the Ranch Sisters. Yeah. Um, I feel like we should. Uh, do you think we'll cover Cafe and Anju and when we talk about the medium? Yeah, we can. Okay, then I'm good for now, I guess. Okay. Uh, I like Gorons. I like all Gorons all the time. Yeah, I'm a big Zora guy. We've all, we've been you've been a Goron guy. I've been a Zora guy. We we have our places. Yes. And we both like the uh, we we both respect where oh, we yeah. come from. Yeah. I have no shade towards Zoras. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a Goron hater. I love yeah. Gorons. I I'll just save that for the medium. Okay. Um But yeah. Yeah. Uh so as we kind of wrap up the character thing, who was your favorite character in the story? Hmm. I think I like uh I liked Kremia a lot. I liked Mikau a lot. I think those two were pretty big for me in this playthrough. Yes. Link, Majora, Skulk, is, all the guys sure. we talked about are awesome. But yeah, probably those two are. Nice. Uh, I liked. I just liked everything about them. Nice. Who's your favorite character? The Happy Mass Salesman. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I can't stop thinking about him. It's a lot, yeah. Do you love a good mystery? I really do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's a cool thing. We always talk about with you specifically how you love mysteries until they're revealed. I was just about to say <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So it's cool to have a character that lives in mystery until the end of time. It's perfect. Yeah. It's, it's exactly uh, what such I'm a great, for. what a satisfying character for you. Yeah. Yeah, because I do often believe. Yeah. And when you tell me the answer to the mystery, I'm like, eh, it was good, but it wasn't as good as I thought. Yeah. It's always as good as I thought now. Packed up that mask and left. <laughs> and we He's know out. nothing more. He's gone. Yeah. Um, I do want to real quick address uh, another couple characters I thought about. Yeah, please. Which is in Ikana Village. Okay. The doctor and his daughter. Yeah. And I like, when I was playing through it and we were talking a little bit, you had mentioned that, like, quest Mm -hmm. as, like, meaningful. And I remember doing it not feeling that... Yeah, I remember I was kind of underwhelmed at you. I I thought, like, like, we were talking, like, isn't this crazy this happened? Yeah. Yeah. But, like, what happened? What changed? I just thought about it more. Yeah. And, yeah, that's, yeah, this game is so good at making you think about stuff like that. I just, I just did it. Yeah. And I didn't really think, and honestly, I, like, tried to talk to them, Mm -hmm. and Tattle was like, you want to just leave him alone? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, this has been a terrible experience. Can we just let him go? Mm -hmm. And I just, like, left. I was like, okay, I got the, the mask now. I'm good to go in the, in the well. Yeah. Um. I just didn't think about it until we had that conversation, and okay. then I started thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. And I, I just like this is like a would be like an extremely moving thing mm-hmm. to see this this girl trying desperately to stop what feels like this inevitable transition yeah. of the doctor into. Oh, that's so sad. I'm gonna say a. Gibdo? Yeah, that's yeah. correct. Um, yeah, it feels like inevitable, and you can tell from mm-hmm. that basement that they're trying to stop it with everything they can. And also just, like, the image that there is no safety for this child. Like, she can't hide yeah. out in her home. She can't go outside because the dead are all around. Yeah. Like, there is no place where this child can relax. Like, just picturing the nights of that kid sleeping in her bed, which is, like, her father, like, banging on the wardrobe. Yeah. It's just, like, it's it's a nightmare. And that's what I'm talking like, The game's good at spooky, but it's great at, like, really think about how horrifying this is. Like, really yes. 
sit with how terrible this. And that's what that's what happened. Yeah. I like sat with it, mm -hmm. and then I was like, "Wow, this is that's cool. This is much more. Yeah, it's much heavier than mm -hmm. I thought when yeah. I just kind of breezed through it." Yeah, I just wanted to mention it because it was like it's really impactful. It's a great quest. Yeah, one of the best. Um, that was up there for one of my favorite quests too. I was kind of surprised when you said the Romani. Yeah. The ranch is just so good. It's really good. The ranch is so fun. I even like... I So, I didn't go like all the way through that side quest. Like, I didn't go with Krami. Oh, okay. Until later. Okay. I, I saved Romani from the aliens... Purely because I was very interested in the aliens. Mm -hmm. And once they were gone, I was like, okay, I got some milk out of the deal. I'm good to go. Yeah. But I didn't even talk to Krimi okay. to learn to go into town oh, until okay. much late. Till I had gone through Akana. Mm -hmm. I had done all the... Because then I spent time like talking to everyone yeah. I could find to try and like find the rest of the masks. And I knew there was more at yeah. that ranch. Okay. So I was like, so I went back, did the quest again, and talked to them, um, and sure. I went through that, and then so then you see the Gorman brothers <laughs> oh, man, yeah. riding with the masks on. Yeah, yeah. Think. And all of a sudden I was like, this is why they had that, <laughs> yeah. because when like the the uh, ghost on the top is like, you gotta go find two mischievous brothers. I was like, I I know who you're talking about. I've raced them before. Mm -hmm. Um. So you I know what's cool? I'm just thinking about this now. I wonder if the mask that they gave you is an extra from the third brother who went to pursue the arts. <gasps> and I got his mask <laughs> Maybe, from... yeah, right? That's, it could be. That's the one. Yeah. But it was just so cool to see them. Mm -hmm. Like, in the mask, and I was like, that's why they have them. Yeah. Because, like, when I got the mask, I was like, why <laughs> do you have this? <laughs> yeah. They're yeah, bad dudes. That was really cool. Yeah, they're not good guys. Yeah. I and like their brother is fine. The the third one yeah. is like just fine. Yeah. It's kind of sad in the bar, gotta be honest. Oh that, that that's mask another great was depressing. Side yeah. I Yeah, anyway. Um so moving on to the setting. Uh Termin is really cool. But what do you think about cool. Terminator? Uh, um, and what do you want to talk about as regards the area that this game takes place in? I think, like, same kind of concept um, as the stuff with Ganon, where I'm like, if you're not going to do the same thing, like, go nuts. Uh, and Terminator is. Terminator is so different from Hyrule. Yeah. And uh, I think what I like about Termina is it really plays into kind of the Majora villain and that it feels very dreamlike. Like, it's just weird how it's like it's laid out in such a dream type way where it's like there's a central area every direction houses this different thing it's just like Hyrule in Ocarina it was very like you feel like you're on a quest you're journeying to each new land everything kind of makes sense but it's just like there's just very, four very distinct quadrants with all their own dream like kind of place and I like that areas can be so weird like I like the Astral Observatory I like how, like, when you go in there, it's just, like, the stars are the walls. When you go into the moon, yeah. that, like, the, that landscape with the tree is one of, like, the coolest, like... Well, yes. It just makes you feel so weird, like, so far from home, like, if that makes sense. Like, it's just nothing... It just feels so dreamlike. They capture a dreamlike energy very well in this game, I think. Yeah. Which I think part of what's cool is, like, they actually use the reuse of the ocarina engine like to its benefit to like make a great um setting because it's weird cause, like kotake and kome like this is a boss from ocarina and yeah now they're two just sweet old ladies who make potions and that is like your dream it's like you know that guy that i know is like you were selling me blue potion and that's crazy yeah that's not what you do yeah it is it does kind of lend itself to that dream like yeah thing i loved even when I like, I love that the in the moon, the that giant field. That's awesome. It was really it's the cool. last thing you'd ever expect. Yeah, and like going through the with all the other masks, mm -hmm. and then finally talking to the kid with Majora's mask on. Yeah, I. 
there's just something so it was so like peaceful yeah and almost like giving you a chance to then be like are you ready yeah let's go and then you go into that fight yeah um it's not me this is the alexander video but he uh he kind of pitched the question like maybe majora also was like a very just lonely like god or whatever he is just a very lonely creature and that's why the symbiotic kind of relationship works so well between those two and that would link all three of them like a link yeah all of them together like i like that because that child is like i'm pretty sure he's like knees up like hugging his knees into his chest sitting by himself while the others are like playing around the tree Mm mm-hmm it's super. It's like this is. It's it's just such a cool game to talk about. That's yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. But yeah, the setting, Termina as a whole, I think is really cool. I actually really love. I really like how it's laid out. Mm-hmm. I like how I. Something in my brain is made happy by like distinct sections. Yeah. It's just like you're walking like snow to yeah. Like, like it's just hard cut yeah. to snow. <laughs> snow. Yeah. I loved how when you took out, when you finished a temple, beat the boss of a temple, Mm. that area changed. Mm. Like something about that place was was different. Yeah. Um, Which is really cool. And I didn't even notice it the first time when I was in the the Deku Swamp. Mm -hmm. Like I knew the water was poisonous and then wasn't. Yeah. But... I, until I went back after I had rewound time, rewound time, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Oh, it's not always clear now." Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I right. just that's only I have to go back mm-hmm. and beat that boss again if I want it to be clear. And that's same cool. With, like Snowhead, let you do that. Yeah. Yeah. Same with Snowhead, which is like I think visually the most drastically different. Yeah. Between the two, like. Mm-hmm frozen and not frozen realities yeah. um it's very cool it's i like cool. termina termina rocks it's clock town cool. like one of the most complex central hubs i think i really it's just like the setting is it's like you know i keep making ocarina comparisons but i do like the difference of like a huge expansive world in ocarina like hyrule feels massive and termina was like just condensed yeah. Everything is personal. Everything is smaller. Every interaction is more like one to one and more. It's just smaller and more dense. And I like that. More personal, I think. Yeah. And even that, I think, lends to the dream state. Yeah. Where everything is contained and relevant um, in this smaller area. Yeah, it's definitely much different than the high, at least what I remember of Ocarina (laughs) Ocarina. of Times. That's one of those times, by the way. (laughs) I heard the beginning of the word and the end of the word, and I couldn't get in between there. And this has all got to go now. Let's keep it. No edits. No edits. No (laughs) cuts. Um, But the the little I played, or... (laughs) <laughs> you beat that game. <laughs> yeah. When I played Ocarina of Time several years ago, yeah. I do the Hyrule is much different is laid out much different. Mm. Um But I liked it. I really like this more compact nature too. Yeah. Um So I have a couple questions. Okay. I might about not have world answers. That you might not have answers to. Yeah. My first question and really the one that's really big for me mm-hmm. is what are the giants what I yeah I mean they all we really just have the, the all night masks granny story is that yeah just four there's just a, a group of five and they were all bros and something in them decided each needed to protect a quadrant of yeah uh, Termino and they split and they did. Uh, but I have a cool fact about the Giants. I think you're gonna like this because like, this is this is one of those games that like I don't know if I'll ever find everything. And yeah. it's so cool what you learn. But I learned about this researching the game is you can call the Giants before you do all the temples, and they will not. Ca- they will try to hold the moon up, but fall 
and they'll explode in there and just the fact that that was added in i'm like this is that's such a cool little detail that i wouldn't even think to do but like of course no. a kid would of course a little kid would be like yeah. i call one giant maybe all the others come like this is the song that calls giants right and that kid has to watch that giant collapse and die and explode and then lose all their progress wow yeah that's so cool that they put that in there yeah that's amazing mm-hmm. yeah they're just they're so mysterious to me and every time we're like transported like in the beginning when we learn the song yeah I just like it's so like you were t- like talking about that dreamlike oh presence gosh, yeah like, that, I, that, that like, place is crazy yes yeah it's just very mysterious it's something very like angel angelic that like yeah. the fairy is what understands them and what creates the back and forth yeah it's yeah and like arcane like yeah ancient there's yeah. something in this land that has that has that they are responsible for yeah um they're really cool they are they're so cool um and when they do succeed i don't know it's just it's just the visual just this because this, the moon is such an oppressive force in this game and just like getting the power to fight back against it feels really cool yeah which is four big nose strange leg looking guys yeah rounded up they the squad look weird <laughs> yeah and identical and it's like what do they what do they talk about with skull kid how did skull I, kid get into that click <laughs> what happened yeah skull kid's a a small like how like just logistically how did they like play card games <laughs> like what yeah like They're like, oh yeah, we love hanging out with the this cookout. Guy. <laughs> How do you even eat the same things? You yeah. can't. You can't even get in that link. They're like, oh yeah, we're going to Sugal Kid's place for the cookout this time. How? <laughs> it's, yeah, it just would be impossible. They're like, they just breathe in the food. They don't eat it. It's yeah. too small. Yeah, they're really interesting. I also think the the masks in general are interesting. Um, specifically the main transformational mm-hmm. masks and how like I didn't even realize and we didn't talk about this in the character part either but I didn't even realize that even the Deku mask seems to be that the Deku butler's son mm-hmm. that, that that is in that mask and that those transformation masks like has like the soul of the person yeah that, that yeah, every from. mask, uh, every character was someone who died with regrets. That's like what we have. Okay. Yeah. And to know that little that little Deku boy died with regrets makes that so much worse. Yeah. The Deku kid is like the most tragic thing that happens in the yeah. game. Yeah, and you put the, I put this together very slowly. Mm-hmm. I didn't recognize it at all. Yeah. I didn't really have the pieces at the beginning of the game yeah. to know that this was like a, a Deku mm-hmm. that that I am now. Um, and then you, I went through that race with the butler. That's a hard race. Pretty early, mm-hmm. like right after I cleared that dungeon and got the princess back. Yeah, I went through that with the butler to get the mask. Mm-hmm. The smelly mask or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> which I never like used. You can get in any way in Woodfall. Okay, um, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It works. Yeah. <laughs> but I like. But then he says something like, "You remind me of my son," or yeah. like something about his son. Mm-hmm. And then that end credit scene mm-hmm. where he like has found the oh, remains. Man. Yeah. Of his son is terribly Just the one depressing. Guy you couldn't save no matter what. He's right before. Yeah, because it was right before. Yeah. Yeah, I love the way the hints are broken down in that because all it is is like, it seems like it's like a tattle tutorial. Like you know, every Zelda game is like Z target with this, and let me tell you about it. It's mm-hmm. like this thing's face is full of anguish, and then you get the butler, and he talks about how you remind him of his son. It's just like wait, like when you, it's another one like the little girl. Like you look back and you're like, oh man. Yeah, this hurts my feelings real bad. Yeah. And it's interesting that they cut to that. It's like one of the last things you see. Right. Like very intentionally they show you all the good you did. But they're like, you didn't 
You, like, even if you did 100% the game, you did not play a perfect game as the hero of the story. Yeah. Which is cool. You couldn't save them all. You couldn't save them all. Ugh. Yeah. That's and you tough. still have it. You didn't find Navi in this game. Like, this Link did not do the things oh, you yeah. wanted to do. And at the end of the... I'm pretty sure in one of the encyclopedias, they say that this Link was never seen again after he goes into the forest. Like, we don't know what happened to this Link just after gone. he goes. Yeah. Hmm. Just, just cool. It's just that's another one. Like, throw it in the mystery pile. Yeah. <laughs> like, what happened? <laughs> well, I think that it's and like we said, I really like mysteries. Yeah. I like this story when stories have mystery and intrigue like that, mm -hmm. and don't answer it. It's so cool. It takes like a lot of courage as a writer to yeah. not give the answer to a mystery. You definitely have to be confident. Yeah to allow the player to draw their own conclusion is cool yeah what was your like favorite area in the game like what did you like the, like where did you like to hang out what was my favorite area just an area you like cool area cool what are like the highlight areas I so despite my uh love of being a Goron most times uh, I actually like Great Bay. I love Great Bay. Yeah, Great Bay is... That's like the part of the game when I get there, I'm always really happy. I really like hanging out there. Yeah. I have... I think that's my answer. I think my answer is like, I like that place the best. If you count like all... Like the entire atmosphere of that, that is so... Because like, we got beavers up top being yeah. weird. Beavers by... Speaking of dreams... Nothing in Zelda looks like that, and nothing like those don't look like Zelda characters to me. Yeah, why those beavers. They, yeah, like those beavers are so f strange. Yeah, I didn't think about that at the time. But yeah, now, like nothing in Zelda looks like that. Yeah, and I like. And they're that. so big. <laughs> big. They're like as big as like Zora Link. Yeah, yeah, they're huge. They're not like regular beavers. Yeah, and. I mean, minus the floaties and the goggles, but yeah, you go like there's depths with uh, huge heels. Yeah, which is cool. That was another one, by the way, where you like I, I don't know how you had like the craziest like, like yeah you got in there without <laughs> the seahorse, right? Yeah, which that's like you and can. I didn't know what to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like because I hadn't gone through the the pirates yet. Yeah, and so I just got I like. Carefully, like I took a couple steps, yeah, and waited for the mist, and then turned, yeah, till the mist wasn't there, and I like got in there. You can do it. You can do it. Yeah, if you I know had, the path, you can do it. But. I had to go back and get the seahorse anyway, because it's kind of vital to get the other seahorse at the bottom. Yeah, because when you do, when I did get in there, I was like, cool, but I don't <laughs> know what's here. Yeah, I don't know why I'm here. Right. I, yeah, I, but the other place that I keep kicking around is Ikana Village. Okay, yeah. I, and I think I might have said this even a while ago when we were talking, but I just, like, I'm, I'm very unsure if I really like it or don't like it. Okay. It's like debatably the cruelest Skull Kid curse to like not let the dead rest. Yeah. And uh, it does. There's a lot of cool stuff in there. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I think Great Bay is probably my favorite area, but. I agree. I feel I like that. Yeah. Is that your? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Great Bay. Yeah, Pirate Fortress too is how awesome is a Pirate dope. Fortress? Yeah. Very dope. I didn't expect the Pirate Fortress. Yeah. I didn't like, I was like, I didn't expect uh, Gerudo's at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Weird to have Gerudo's no Ganon. Yeah. That's why I was, was kind of like, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, probably just another, like, we had to be creative and reuse the models and that was yeah. maybe the only models they had for that stealth. Although, no, they have Deku's who are, uh, Deku will... Oh yeah, stealthy out of that little area. I kind of like I like things like that. Mm -hmm. I really in, like in games like where you have to like stealth your way around things. Yeah. Um, 
like a big like the Arkham games with the Batman games. Yeah. You have to do a lot of that. I really liked that. I remember as a kid. That's one of the things too. I think um, they really improved as a sequel from Ocarina. Like we're in we're in medium, right? I know we're talking setting right now, but yeah, we can be in medium. Okay. Yeah, but um, I like. It's just we're like, still in the meat, technically. Oh god! Gotcha. I haven't hit the plot yet, but I'll wait. I'll wait. Okay, we're waiting. I just I like. Yeah. They improve um, gameplay mechanics pretty well, I think, and that's a good example of one. And also, like we yeah. talked about with the uh, the alien quest, like before in Ocarina, you were just kind of going through the desert, shooting targets on a wall, and that's fun and that's fine. But like this high stakes alien quest to save a little Yo. girl. It's pretty cool. Thank the Lord for the dog. Yeah. It's okay, because you, uh, you rode around, you ran around the house, right? And you just shot at him? Yeah. Because I think the quest, like, pretty heavily implies you should try to ride Epona around the ranch and do it. Well, that's what I did the first time. How'd you do it the first? I thought you encountered them the first time. Oh, no, I, d- I just ran around and hit him the first time. Oh, with your the, sword. When I successfully did it. Okay, yeah. I, I was on Epona because that's yeah. how you practice with the balloons. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so I was like, okay, I have to do it this mm-hmm. way. But then the second time, I was like, I I don't think I have to do it this way. Yeah. And I had the bunny hood by that time. Bunny hood too. So I was just booking it around that little shack. Yeah. If I stop seeing the dog, I'm like, where where did it go? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, I forget what you were saying. But um, it's a cool setting. Yeah. I, I there's not an area I would even say I, I dislike. I I think everything's kind no. of fun to tra- traverse. Yeah, there's not an area I dislike aesthetically. I will say, mechanically, there's one area I'm not that fond of. Okay. And I suppose we'll <laughs> conceal that for later. Little teaser for the um, people. But let's as. We close out the meat here and talk about the 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 plot any plot elements that we haven't already talked about we've talked about a lot mm-hmm. um, that you want to talk about I think we should probably talk about cafe and Anju okay and their quests yeah because it's pretty big mm-hmm. and mostly story mm-hmm. um, how did you feel about about that quest about them what are your thoughts on them I uh, I like that quest a lot I think it's really good I think it's uh it's just, it's sweet. I think they're really good at painting Anju as being like a real believer. And like she really does love like a hopeless romantic kind of. Yeah. And it's good at painting him as like the super desperate, like ha- it just has to be done this exact perfect way. And everything has to go down how he wants. And it's just like, if you, it's so hard, but if you can make it happen, it's just like getting it all together feels really good. But then yeah. bittersweet, which is like what the whole they're the melancholic game, because they've got hours at most. Yeah. And they are at the center of. They're either at the center of a nuke or, they're going right back to loneliness. Right. Which is cool because I think they like they're very intentional about like, uh, both of those characters being um. Huge, like they're very. Sent, they place Andrew in so many central locations. Like you're not gonna not run into Andrew and talk to her yeah. a bunch of times for a bunch of reasons. And then I think they make Cafe really mysterious because, like, if you once you learn about how this game works, like you want those masks. So the little yeah. kid who runs to the mailbox with like a really cool looking fox mask <laughs> and zips back to his house and you never see him again. Yeah. You're like, what is going on here? <laughs> I'm gonna need that. <laughs> I'm gonna need. That. I'm gonna need to know what's up. And also, it's cool, like, just outside of the game world perspective I'm like that's a new model so nothing from oh, Ocarina yeah. is like that so you are he's, he draws you he, everything about him just draws you in I think yeah 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 I like Cafe a lot Cafe's cool I like, Cafe's another I like very you character I would say yeah I like Cafe a lot yeah, yeah. Um, it's very interesting it took me several cycles to get that done yeah because I kept missing things like I'm missing windows Mm -hmm. 
of time and just a couple of really tight weird ones. Yeah. Yeah. I just couldn't couldn't get there in time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I thought overall, I like their story. Yeah. I, I, I do like that, like... That might be the strongest emotional beat is that reunion, I think, of, like, that really does feel like the heart yeah. of this game. And I do love, I love that, like, we're gonna sit here. Yeah. And we're gonna wait it out. Yeah. I... It's really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's cool. It's... It's nice. Mm. In what is like utter despair. It's cool to see like we're just we're gonna sit here. Yeah. And wait it out. Yeah. Because this was like all we needed. Mm Mm-hmm. And we're content then. Yeah. That moon is scary. Yeah. I I don't wanna live in that world. No. Um Yeah, I We've talked about a lot of the of the story of the of the plot already. Is there anything that we missed that you wanted to make sure we talked about before we moved on? I, th- I think it'll be covered later. I think we'll probably have more character talk, but tied specifically to mechanics and stuff. So yeah, I am good for and um, yeah, I'm good for now. Okay, cool. So we will end the meet and move on into the medium. But before that. We have listener question number two, which is, which of the temples was your favorite? Hmm. And I went first last time, so you got to go first this time. I think uh, Stone Tower Temple is my favorite temple. Um, I just... Two for two. Nice. Nice. Yeah. We just, we're on it. We're on it. I just think that there's... I... I, I to this, like, I remember the first time I saw it, every time I saw it, the mechanic of flipping this dungeon upside down is the most mind-blowing thing. Mm. It's just, it's so cool. It's really cool. The fact that it works, like, even like, just design-wise blows my mind. Yeah. That that, it just clicks. And it's so cool. And even just, like, the aesthetic of this temple, it's like the LG of emptiness is so weird. Those statues are so weird. Everything mm. is, it's just such a freaky temple. Yeah. Music is so good. It's yeah, it's good. I just I really like that. Yeah. It's so cool when you're going through it mm-hmm. that like when I was like initially I enter it, I would not think that it could be flipped upside down and no. that works like that. Yeah. Because upside but, down is like the sky. Like you're looking up right. at the sky. Yeah. Yeah. But it does work. Yeah. And that it is really cool. Also, yeah, and that's I, my favorite temple yeah. too. I think I, I want to, in my research for this, I looked up that, uh, I don't even know if this is a Christian thing, but I heard that this might be a reference to the Tower of Babel. Do you have background there? Does that make sense at all to you? I would maybe ask, like, in what way? I could see... Maybe in just, like, an up is down kind of way, like, you think you're ascending, but you're actually flipping it and heading down to tw- twin mold i don't know i don't totally know the story of the tower of babel so in the tower of babel of the people of earth come together and they build a tower and they say we're going to build this tower up to heaven mm-hmm. we're going to reach we're going to reach up to heaven and so what they're really saying is we are now great enough to become god okay by building this temple and so my idea of that is like, like in this sense, mm-hmm. is is the king of Akana and the, the people of Akana, mm-hmm. are they saying they are, they have the hubris to build this thing. Yeah. Um, that, that is great. But I, it could be anything else. I have no idea. But okay. um, it's, it's just a really cool temple. Yeah. Maybe they're saying like the ascension up because like getting yeah. to the Stone Tower Temple was such a great climb. Yeah. Up. Only to reveal if that all flipped, you've actually been descending the whole time and going down. Right. I don't oh, know. Oh, maybe. It's cool. Maybe yeah. a very literal translation if it's if it is based on the Tower of Babel. Sure. That's but, cool though. Yeah. Yeah, that's neat. Uh, Great Bay Temple also great. They're all good. Like yeah, it was one of those things like they didn't have a lot of temples, but everything hit so good as a result. Yeah, 
three. Yeah, I of, thought like, they were all really good. Yeah, I would say Stone Tower also what it did really well is, and you, I know you like this when games do it too. I love the challenge that's like, do everything you know, like put every mask yeah. to work now that you have all three transformation masks. Yeah, it's like everything had its moment to shine. Yeah. And you had to know, like, how to use them in different... Mm -hmm. And, like, even... I, I didn't think, up to that point, I had not, outside of maybe a couple times with a couple flowers, mm -hmm. I had not used the Deku mask, like, significantly. Yeah. Since, like, Woodfall. Mm -hmm. um, and so to then, like, have to navigate, like, a good portion of the Stone Temple with the Deku mask was, like, interesting... Yeah, just brought it back mm -hmm. in a way that I didn't didn't think it would do. I yeah. guess. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I really like Stoneful Temple. Anyway, let's talk about the medium. So, as I said, this is the first video game that that we've done on this podcast, um, and that means that there's a lot of things about this medium that aren't in most stories mm -hmm. that would be in different formats and stuff. So what? What is unique about this as a video game and and how that helps tell the story? Um, I think what's cool is you're given the same three day period of time to look at and you can examine it in the way that's most interesting to you and sometimes the story unfolds in front of you and I just think there's no way this could be anything else but a video game to be as interesting as it is. It's yeah. Like the way the story unfolds is sometimes not even your choice. Like, you stumbled upon this robbery with the grandma, and you got the bomb mask, and that's cool. And that's, like, one option. But, like, another option could be you could be shopping, you could go talk to that guy and her grandma, and he'd be like, my grandma got robbed last night. And then your brain, you'd be like, I'm going back in time. That grandma's going to be fine. Yeah. It's like you're building your own there, and you really... Like take and like they really they go out of their way to be like what would you want to do if you could do anything with time travel? It's like I would want to win the lottery. I would want to yeah. like do like it's just I want to figure things out and take advantage of the world. I just yeah. like down to like every little detail is cool. Yeah, I I don't know that I've ever encountered a mechanic like the three day time limit. Yeah like this I when I started playing so I am a terribly anxious person this <laughs> yeah. isn't news to you but maybe news to everyone else yeah um I thought this was gonna like terrify me mm -hmm. I thought I was gonna be like a, a wreck mm -hmm. playing this game but I really wasn't I thought it was cool to be able to like think about like okay how do I optimize then mm -hmm. this time what must happen yeah. Before I have to reset, and to and to look at things like that way, even like, what, like entering a temple, mm -hmm. and being like, oh no, yeah, I'm in here, I only have like one day left. I just got here. Yeah. I don't know if I'm gonna make it. Yeah, and you can choose to roll the dice on that. It might not go well. Yeah, and like how frustrating it is when I didn't make it mm -hmm. through snow. <laughs> Snowhead, right? Yeah. Maybe, yeah. When I didn't make it through Snowhead Temple, but made it a good deal through. Yeah. Was that your most tragic loss? Yeah, I got yeah. really far in. Yeah. That's another thing that I would also say. Um, could only ever be a video game. Because if I'm watching a movie and I know Link has five hours, I'm not panicking. I'm not stressed. No. I'm like, he's either going to hit it or he's not. But the personal control... And, like, the force that I have to know I have to make the call at some point and, like, rolling the dice on what I do and don't want to risk is, like, that's... It's, like, purely taking advantage of a video game mechanic. Yeah. And it just feels... Like, it does, it does make me anxious in a good way. Like, I enjoy that much more than if I was watching a movie where a character had, like... Like, if a character's defusing a bomb in a movie. Like, I'm not ever panicking. Right. But. Yeah, because it's your actions now. Yeah. Like, you're in, you're responsible. And you will lose if you don't make it. Right. You will lose big if you don't get to what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. That is unique about this game, even among other video games, I mm -hmm. think. 
Yeah. But it's definitely allows this game to tell a story that wouldn't be possible in mm. those other mediums. Because the, I'm not <laughs> wrapped up in that time frame. Because yeah. I know, he, like you said, he's either going to do it or he's not. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's very cool. It's very cool. I, I also, I really love the, the mask component as well mm-hmm. um, I think it's really cool to introduce like puzzles mm-hmm. to solve with the different transformation masks for sure yeah um, but even like the I think about the side quest of the the chicken guy and how like I just like I walked in there when I was exploring the ranch um, and th- this mask I got a while ago from this guy whose dog w- became the er, the dog the guy who's in the traveling yeah. troop, right? <laughs> right? Right. And the dog was the leader instead of him. He told me this whole story, yeah. and then gave me an eagle-looking mask. I like like that. That is connected then to the chicken guy mm-hmm. as I lead the chickens around, and this makes them grow up. Um. I just think it's a really cool it's just a really cool mechanic and not like it's a cool way to introduce different ways to play the game yeah yeah I think two things this game does really well is um, I would say the core uh, gameplay themes of Zelda are usually like exploration is the key to success and I think Majora stands out where experimentation is more the key to success in this game yeah, like approaching things in weird ways you wouldn't think to. Definitely. Like how does this, how does the Deku do here? How does the Zora do here? Because it's like so many people can be interacted with in a very specific way that just you come to with trial and error, which is cool now because I think like as we're recording this, Tears of the Kingdom came out not too long ago. Like Zelda, and yeah. with Breath of the Wild, like Zelda right now is also back in a big uh, place of experimentation. That's kind of the mission statement alongside exploration yeah i think the other thing that's cool with the masks is every single character gets a really fun playground to test out these new abilities like everyone has a huge expanse yeah that you really get to just go wild with all of them yeah and this is like movement in the zelda is so much fun to the point where like epona who was like the most fun thing, like moving wise in Ocarina of Time, is like one of the last things I would willingly choose to do. Because really, I just like Bunny Hood Link gets where I need to go. Goron rolling is cool. If I'm in the water, I'm Zora swimming. Like oh, well, sure, yeah. Even like like the Deku mask falls off a little bit after um, the Zora mask introduction, but yeah. I did enjoy. I enjoy skipping. Skipping? Yeah, skipping was good. Skipping is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I like Epona a lot. I read, I wrote Epona a ton. Yeah, listen, she's great. No shade to Epona. Great horse. I hate shooting a bow off of Epona, but really, even in the 3DS game? Yes. Really? Maybe more so. I wow. The thing I hated was it's both controlled by the joystick yeah. and the motion of the thing of the 3DS. Yeah. And so, like, I would throw myself off because I moved it. Okay. When I was trying to aim, and then opponents just still going whatever way we were going before. Yeah, you can turn that off, but I like the gyroscope aiming. I, I like. Probably. I great. liked it as long as I was like on the ground. Like yeah. my thing was, I was still moving. Okay. When yeah. I was trying to aim. Yeah. And yeah. then if I, I if I missed, like if I tilted at the wrong time, I would miss a shot that otherwise I would have taken. That's great. Yeah, but you probably you crushed the, the Octorock game in town, I'd imagine. I don't, no, the squ- like the squid guy, like in Clock Town, you didn't do that guy's shooting gallery. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow, yeah. that was gone from my brain. <laughs> from there. Yeah, yes, I did. I really like in any game I play at all. Mm. I love archery. Okay. Yeah. I I've yet to find a game that I don't like using the bow and arrow. Okay. Um, so I really like shooting stuff like. Mm. 
I'm big into that. It just was hard on the horse. Okay. Yeah, I liked. I didn't have gyroscope aiming while I was playing the Nintendo 64 one. Okay. But like, it is harder. But I, I enjoy the challenge that comes with that, and the trade-off specifically for the ranch quest that you get to the aliens faster, but it's much harder to hit them. Mm. Yes. But uh, yeah, Apon is cool. Archery is cool. Yeah. I always have trouble with the uh, the uh, the one by Woodfall. Did you do that shooting game? That one's hard for me without the gyroscope aiming. I don't know that I did it. Okay. I don't know that I did a shooting gallery, a shooting game in Woodfall. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, I really like. I like shooting. I like the. And I liked it in Ocarina of Time too. But, yeah. Um, yeah, Link is very cool with the bow. Yeah, I usually like bows. Yeah. Um, it's a very cool. It's a really cool kind of system <laughs> um, that allows the story to be told in a unique way. That is cool. I. So, I don't know. We, and you already mentioned this a little bit. But how do you, how do you feel that the soundtrack contributes or doesn't contribute to the game? And we even you even mentioned that like the one time at the end where it's completely silent mm -hmm. um, when the happy mass salesman is talking there, and how that definitely contributes to to what it's communicating. I I really like the music. I don't know if you have anything else about that, but. Uh, I think, yeah, it's like the melancholic atmosphere that they were going for is perfectly captured uh, within the soundtrack. Like, I I almost can't stand hanging out for those last few. I like my body reacts in a way like, I don't want to be here unless I absolutely have to. <laughs> yeah. Where it's just like, it's just, in the 3DS game, it's just red everywhere yeah. you go. It's like, you just, you just, it just feels like the end of everything. It's just, I'll tell you what. When the the clock, the countdown, yeah, becomes big, yeah, with yeah. like the moon right there, mm -hmm. I like, I do like, even though it says, like, it tells me the time, yeah, that I have, I'm freaking out. <laughs> as soon as that happens, I'm That's like, we so gotta go, we gotta get out of here, yeah. Anju Cafe, let's get this going. Yeah, that song messes me up. And it's like the game is not shy about being fun either. Like I feel like yeah. anybody who plays that game will have the Deku Palace song stuck in their head for mm. weeks after they play it. <laughs> I can hear <laughs> it right now. Yeah. It's uh it's great. It's a banger. It's a banger, yeah. <laughs> it's it's very good. It's just yes, yeah, I feel like they capture atmosphere well. I think if you do want to go beyond soundtrack, sound design is really good. Like just like the little the serotonin hit. Anytime my bomber's notebook gets updated, like that little jingle. Yeah. I think that's huge. Yeah. It just feels good. Uh, the bomber's notebook is really helpful. Yeah. Oh, in the 3DS, too, they really overhauled that and made it awesome. Oh, did it's not yeah. the same. It's not the same, but it's good. It's Okay. Yeah, it's not. They just really, they updated and it a lot. You said for this, did you play the N64 version? Mm -hmm. nice. But I played the 3DS not too long before this, too, so pretty comfy with both gotcha yeah i played the 3ds version I mean, we talked about that with the gyroscoping and everything yeah um yeah i just really like the songs yeah i thought that they were interesting do you have any like standout tracks you like a lot no <laughs> I, I did like the deku palace it is yeah. still in my head astral um, observatory is cool yeah it is i i like a lot of like I definitely the the tense songs mm -hmm. made me feel tense. Yeah. Um, even sometimes in some of the boss battles where I wasn't tense. Yeah. Uh, the music definitely contributed to an atmosphere of of nerves. Mm -hmm. When sometimes the clock that I thought was going to do that didn't end up doing that to me. Yeah. Like a couple of uh, ocarina songs too. I will say. Um, Elegy of Emptiness and the Song of Healing, I think, tonally, are mm. perfect for what they need to be. Yeah. Like, I like that the Song of Healing starts kind of somber and it gradually gets to a place of joy. 
and the elegy of emptiness just like it is exactly how it sounds yeah and it, it feels weird and it's a good thing that's the song you have to play 500 times to get to the stone temple tower yes you really feel the weight of that song by the end of that long oh. long climb yeah i I don't know. I was interested that they put like a owl save point, which I don't actually. Know. Are those in the N64 version? They're in. I'll tell you what, man. I don't understand how the saves. It's like notoriously confusing how that save system. Like you, you can save at an owl statue, but I, I'll have to show you the text box for what it says because it's like there. It is like just. A full page of information about how this owl statue works, but basically, like the only confirmed way to save in that game is if you play the song of time, you go back. It automat it saves and takes you back. Okay. But yeah, the owl statues are not. There's I don't know. There's it's like you can save here, you can come back once. If you come back again, you will you'll be back at the beginning. It's uh, huh. it's weird. I'll show you the box. Because like in the 3DS version. Yeah, you just save. Once you get to the top. Yeah. I'm good. I never have to do that again. Because mm -hmm. I'll just fast travel. Oh, any fast there. travel statue is also in... Um, okay. Yeah. You can fast travel to the same ones. Gotcha. But the save ones are different. The save ones have different mechanics that I don't fully understand. Yeah. I... Uh, speaking of the fast travel statues... Um, I thought the owl was going to be more important. Yeah. And he wasn't. I don't... Yeah, I'm not... I just... He was in the swamp, and then he was in <laughs> Snowhead. Yeah. And I was like, okay, we're probably going to see him. Then he just wasn't. Yeah. And I don't know that I needed more Owl. I just... I don't know. It was strange. Yeah. It was weird. Um... We kind of covered this, but... Do you think that this was the best way to tell the story? Yeah. Okay. I'm for sure. I and I say that I say that kind of partly because I, if I remember right, there are Legend of Zelda manga mm -hmm. and probably shows if I, I'm not familiar with them. One show, but it's silly. Oh, this is bad. It's just like if you see like the Super Mario Brothers show, it's like that vibe. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, so like it's but I, goofy. But I remember the manga being like more serious. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but even then, it's like one, like could you tell Majora's Mask in one volume of manga? It's just not, it's it's a tall it's a tall task. You can summarize it, but I don't think you can tell it as yeah. satisfyingly as is. I don't. It's like one of the truest. Like you mu like even like I'm a big like I'm not too big on like if a game is narratively driven. Like, I'm like, you could probably watch it and get most of the experience, but I yeah. think it is important not only that this is a game, but that to experience it in the best way possible, that you personally play it. Like, get hands on the controller yeah. and get in there yourself. Yeah, because I think there's things that you'll understand mm -hmm. a about it that way that you might not if you just were told the story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think even like, you know, we're talking about the, the stress of your decision making mm -hmm. on that time frame is important. If it's not in this way, then yeah. you don't have that. And that has a lot of replay value. Like, you just beat it for the first time. Yeah. I'd imagine since then you've had the thought, like, I could get back in there and do it again. I know I'd do so many yeah. things different. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you would. Yeah, mm -hmm. I. it's... It's just very interesting. It definitely offers replayability mm -hmm. because of that that component of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think it would do as well. I don't think it would be the same thing. Yeah. Um, and it might take away my mystery, and that's not what I want. No. It's <laughs> um, kind of what makes this fun. I, yeah. It kind of makes this fun. But on as far as the medium, do you have any more medium-related thoughts before we move away from that? Yeah. Um, I think one of the things I think this game does well uh, is I like the sense of immersion that I think comes purely from 
gameplay and being Link. And dealing with the time travel mechanic, because it's like you said, like we said, you think about the little moments a lot when you play this game. So I like that there's little triggers, and it's just, once you gather the awareness in this story, it gets harder and harder to play the game, because you're running through, and you're like, that little girl is sleeping alone, her dad is yeah. turning, like, okay, I let a day go by, so Romani is done. It's yeah. just like, people are suffering constantly you the more you play the more aware you become of the suffering all around you that you have stopped but are not currently stopping so you know exactly how it goes down which is another thing is that you can see both sides of a situation which is cool mechanically for this game hmm. it's like i yeah. know what happens when i failed and when i succeed and i can flip that whenever i want yeah you know i didn't think about it that way because I, I usually in those kind of games that, that are make you have to make a choice yeah. right and that will affect the mm. world I I like get anxiety about that yeah because I don't because I want to make the correct one mm -hmm. um, but this is uniquely you're able to see the consequence of both sides mm -hmm. what happens if I do either um yeah, and I, I did think, every time, after night one, I did think, they got her. Yeah. Like, they got Romani. Yeah, because of your actions, technically, all these characters are in an infinite loop of suffering and right. <laughs> misery. But it's, yeah, it's... She's uh, up there with the aliens and the cows. Yeah. Seems like the aliens are much more focused on the cows, and that's where my mind's gonna stay. Yeah. Yeah, they just kind of brain wiped her center back, let her roam around the field. <laughs> just bummer. And it's, yeah, it's another one. It's wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. They send her back? Yeah, that's, like, if you go talk to her, she's like, she has no motor function. She can barely speak. She's just kind of like going and start, like, she won't teach you Epona's song. Like, that's, like, why, that's, like, why you need to save her. Because that's mechanically what she does. But, yeah, she's back on the, like, that... Kremi is at the dinner table crying while her sister like basically roams the field like I didn't even know oh, you, you can go back and check you can just they sent her forward. back yeah. I mean I believe you no I, I was I just didn't <laughs> you're know. calling me a liar <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I wasn't I just didn't like I didn't ever encounter that yeah I was I don't know that I was ever at the field on day three yeah yeah she's out there that's a bummer yeah. We know that they, they scrambled those eggs, huh? Yeah. Well, now I know that I've created a mental patient every time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you do understand the consequences. Hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. What else you got? Anything? I, uh, I liked being all of the transformation. I think that's another thing that's... Um, it's really... A really cool sense of immersion and really freaky because Link is a silent protagonist. It feels like you're approaching these these uh, people who think that. I mean, you look exactly like someone who is dead. Yeah. And in the Goron's case, they know you're dead, and you're basically parading around town as like the ghost of this hero. Right. It's just like it feels. It just feels like I, and it doesn't feel icky. It just feels like it feels so weird to be parading like choosing to parade around the body of this guy who is dead yeah for the gorons because they know he's dead and then for the zoras because they don't know he's dead they think they're just talking to their friend who they don't know died right. earlier that day which is crazy it was trippy to walk around the zoras like home down there yeah because they do speak to you mm. like you are just that guy yeah except lulu like lulu hints that yeah. she knows which is cool but yeah, it's just, it, I don't know, it's just like I'm in the shoes of a dead man and they're all talking to me like I'm their pal. It's like it's a necessary yeah. step, but it just feels so ominous. It feels so strange. It's like nothing I've ever experienced before. I think that's cooler as a video game because, again, you're making the choice and you're doing that. Right. Yeah, and you can add the even the nuance again that you could completely ignore if you wanted to mm -hmm. but that you add all these di all this dialogue from all these people yeah. that reinforces this idea of 
you're the dead really. Yeah. And yeah, in the case of Darmani, it is weird. Because they almost always start like, Whoa, Darmani, I thought you were dead! Yeah. Like, <laughs> and they're great. I love Gorons. Yeah. But... Like that guy got too with the dad, like... Yeah. It just really makes you wonder, like, what he was thinking in that moment. Because... Yeah. I don't know. I'd like to think he was, like, really happy. But also just, like, you know, missing his son in that moment. Right. Yeah. It's, just, it's freaky to think about that dad because he uh, looked like a little Deku kid. Yeah. He's the one that almost doesn't make it sound like... Like, I think that's why I had less of an easy time with the Deku, like, connecting that. Mm-hmm. Until Darmani, yeah. where I was like, this is a dead guy's spirit. Right. That's what I have. Yeah. Uh, like, because, like, his talk about that was like you remind me of like you look like Mm -hmm. yeah I think that's intentional in a cool way yeah it almost like you kind of have to like it lengthens this like I don't quite know what the masks are period Mm -hmm. yeah Um, and what they're doing especially the transformational masks Mm mhm which, while we're talking about gameplay and the medium. Yeah. Uh, so I got all the masks. Nice. The express purpose to get the final mask. Um, and I, I think I already said the only one I looked up mm-hmm. was the All Might mask because I did not. I, I had no idea how I was going to find that. Yeah. But I got through the other ones by just talking to everyone I could find. Um, and I, I mean, I guess given enough time, maybe I would have found that. Or maybe I would have found that, like, that guy had it on night three. It's it's tough. Yeah, there's a lot of little things that could easily go wrong on that one. Yeah, but... Um, but... So I had the Fierce Deity Mask mm-hmm. when I fought Majora. Yeah. It's unfortunate. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't much of a fight. <laughs> you <were wondering. laughs> I, so, and this is actually, like, this is even broader. Yeah. Um, like, talking about most of the bosses in this game, with the exception of one, I often thought that the bosses in this game were very easy to beat. Yeah. I had trouble. I... Definitely, I think the easiest was the bull at Snowhead. I forget what his actual name is. Hot uh, goat. That was the easiest one for me. Okay. Um, but the first one at Woodfall was pretty easy. Mm. Um, and the fish was pretty easy too. I yeah. think the fish got me one time. Okay. Um, the uh, are they tripod? Tri- twin mold. Twin mold. At Stone and it's gone. Stone Tower. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they were hard. Okay. I actually had trouble with yeah. them. I had to like kind of learn it in steps, like I would expect to, like on a lot of bosses. Sure. Yeah. Um. And my word, I felt like I had to throw the second one around for an eternity before he actually. I did it so many times. I thought. This isn't how you beat it. Yeah. Uh, But, anyway. uh, With the exception that a lot of these bosses, I felt, were easy. Mm. And even that one wasn't super hard once I figured out the pattern. Yeah. Um, But, with the Fierce Deity Mask, (laughs) Majora is quick. Yeah. Did you go back and refight him normal, or did you just go I didn't refight him. Okay. It's a good fight, but yeah, I think the Fierce Deity Mask was... It's you obliterate Majora. Yeah, it is not close. Yeah. I think it's cool. It's a very cool. I really thing. like And again, like, what's going on? What is happening here? What is the fierce deity? Yeah. Why is he that why does he look like Link? Mm-hmm. Really he just cool looks sword. like adult Link. Impractical, but what a cool sword. Yeah. That's a thing. Uh, I've seen other stories do the double helix sword. 
okay. as like a creation sword. It's usually oh, okay. like tied with like the creation of the world. Okay. Interesting. Um, I wonder if that's like a legend or something. It might Famous, be some kind of thing. Uh, it might be like a Japan thing. Mm. I, I don't know. Cool. It looks if awesome. If you know yeah. and you're listening, throw it in the comments. But get in the comments. I know that. I I have seen that before, in manga. Um, so it could just be a Japan thing. But it is a cool sword, like design wise, it looks cool. Definitely impractical, but <laughs> not if you could shoot lasers from the front. <laughs> yeah. Then it's super practical. Yeah. You don't have to get close at all. No. Amatura takes some flops in that fight. If you, mm. it's really yeah, it's a cool fight. It's yeah. a cool fight either way. I guess it's cool to obliterate the final boss, I, but I didn't take. Like because I was playing the game for you know to to, to do this podcast, mm. I didn't. I wasn't. I didn't just get go ham in there. Yeah. But I imagine you could. You definitely can. You absolutely can. Yeah. And even like even without doing that, it was not hard. Yeah. Yeah, it's worth doing if you ever feel like just seeing yeah. how the, the boss plays out. Because it is a cool boss. Yeah, because there's like phases. Mm -hmm. That were interesting. How yeah. cool is the breakdancing phase where he's just zipping around? That's cool. I like that phase. That's another phase. It's like it's just like this boss feels almost unconcerned that you're there. Like rarely yeah. just just a pure like a being that can't contain itself. It's just got to go yeah. nuts. It, it and it is like unconcerned with you being there. like it yeah. moves as if it's not necessarily, especially in the beginning of that fight. Mm -hmm. It moves around. And not, I don't, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I just want to, I, like, I don't know if this is a common thought that people have about the game, that the the bosses seem to be quite easy. Uh, well, they changed, it's common for the 3DS, because they changed a lot of the bosses. Okay. For, like, um, yeah, the, you'd, you'd be surprised by what's different, but first of all, in the Nintendo 64 game, none of the bosses have a big eye weakness. None of them do that. What? Yeah, none of them have a thing where their eye gets big and you hit it a lot. Um, Yarg never goes underwater, and um, huh. Twin Mold, you don't do WWE moves. You just the Stone Mask, you just get big and you can just hit Twin Mold with your sword. Oh, yeah, that will make more sense. Much quicker. But um, oh, I will say, thank the Lord, they because... changed uh, Twin Mold's opening phase. I do. Some of the changes I do like, like I don't mind the underwater section with the fish. Yeah. I might say I still prefer the original, but um, it's fine. Uh, the opening of Twin Mold where you shoot at the eyes is new. I think that's really cool. Mm. Um, Adola, the first guy. Um, you can hit him yeah. with anything in that fight, which makes it really just this all-out offensive battle between what you have at that point versus Adola. Huh. Whereas in the other game, you, you like have... It's very like standard Zelda. You have to like do so. Like I think you have to go in the flower, pop up, drop the bomb, and then he falls over, right? The deck yeah. nut, yeah, yeah. Which uh... you now? I actually didn't beat him that way the first time. How did you beat him? Arrows. You wouldn't have had arrows at that point. Would you? I wouldn't have. Oh no, you would. Yeah. I thought I just got regular. Yeah, arrows. yeah, you're right. Because I could shoot him and he'd fall over, like or in the head, or yeah. Okay, so but it was much. Players harder than if I just did the Deku nut thing. Yeah, okay. That's way easier. That's yeah. They when clearly I intend you to use Yes. Yeah. But in the Nintendo 64, everything you have hurts that guy. Like you can Oh, yeah, that You could even true. straight like run and spit at him and like oh, the spin will get him. Huh. Yeah, that wasn't true. He would you might fall over, but you have to shoot his mask. Yeah. Yeah, no big eye weaknesses. That's crazy. It's funny that you say Goat 2 is the weakest, not the weakest, but the easiest, because I think that's my favorite. Because what I like about these bosses, they are easy. I don't think anyone's particularly super no. threatening, but they are mechanically it, interesting for Zelda, which is usually yeah. like, you just got the bomb, here's a guy that eats bombs, put a bomb in his mouth, and then hit him with the sword. You got like, him. You can do weird things in this game. Like, I just, I think... Uh, 
the gameplay of like just being a Goron barreling down this like circular hallway like going off ramps yeah. to land on like this weird ancient looking bull is really cool yeah and I don't I don't want it to sound like that's a necessarily even a criticism mm -hmm. cause it's not like the boss being the bosses being easy is necessarily a negative thing yeah I just it, I just noticed that as it's, I was going through it it's narratively like a strange choice too cause I would I would say I feel, with the exception of Woodfall, that Majora asks comparatively a lot of you in its dungeons compared to other Zelda games. Sure. Like, in complexity. Yeah. So maybe, I don't know, maybe the idea is like, it's going to be hard to get there within the time limit, so if you get to the boss, it would suck to lose, to have to start over because you kept dying to a boss over and over again. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that is part of the... The thought process. Yeah, I didn't think about that. But yeah, but Majora, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I understand the fear stage decision. Like, I kind of wish that was still a more challenging fight, but it's cool to uh, blow up the final boss. But I do, I think that fight is at its best when you're just Link. Yeah. And you, you use a lot of the transformation masks in that fight. The Zora one's big in that fight. Oh well, I'm glad I did fear stage. Yeah. I, I had the most trouble with the Zora mask. Mm -hmm. Oh, that makes it. That's probably how you hit the oh, flowing fins. mask with the fins. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I I had trouble swimming. Yeah. I I got much better okay. at swimming by the end of that game. Yeah. But like because when you do. I forget the fish boss's name. Uh, Gyarg, I think. What? Sure. When, yeah. you do, when you do Gyarg's, yeah. uh, like, challenge, you talk to him at the tree, mm -hmm. you have you have to, like, s use the fast swimming. Mm -hmm. I think we even talked about that there's not a difference in the N64. If you're swimming forward, it's the fast one. It's Yeah, it's always... It's you are fast swimming in that game. I think that's kind of the problem that they set themselves up with is they made it consume magic. Yeah. Which, like, the problem that I think exists with that is when you get the Zora mask, the first thing you want to do is you want to hop in that ocean and you want to swim. Yeah. And it's so fun and cool in the Nintendo 64 game to swim fast because it's a limitless resource. Whereas, like, I think if you know it takes magic in the 3DS, you're kind of desensed. Sent, not incentivized yeah. to use it because like oh that uses magic I don't want to do that yeah that's exactly how I felt yeah and they didn't put magic in the Great Bay which is like a wild decision to me but yeah it was hard yeah if I was out yeah you like, just I'm can't like, get right, into that pirate you gotta go <laughs> you gotta get hop back magic out. from somewhere yeah which yeah. is a shame because like I the Zora uh, I like the Zora mask and I like the swimming is my favorite movement option in that game, and like mastering that is my favorite. I just I love I love it the was, movement option. It was cool to master. It was cool to get better. Yeah, because you uh, did the beavers. So yeah, the that, beaver yeah. game helped me, and definitely that last. Uh, yeah, but that's the problem. That shouldn't you shouldn't be learning at the last phase of the game. Yeah, and that's also a 3DS exclusive challenge. That's not in the oh. Nintendo 64 game. Do you do... You do something with all the guys, but not that specific one you don't do. Let me tell you, I hated the Goron one. The Goron one is like the same. <laughs> that one is so brutal. It was so bad. That, that one's really tight. I just got so mad falling down that crevice <laughs> the a turns billion times. So tight. <laughs> I just... Yeah. I got it. You hated Goron Racing too, right? You struggled with the Goron Race. Oh my gosh, <laughs> yeah, the yeah. Goron Race. So I like, I get way ahead Yeah. in the beginning. I'm like, we're good. We're gold. Because yeah. I'm like Mario Kart is mm -hmm. what's in my head. Yeah. No, they'll, they'll rubber band themselves back. Directly behind you. It took so long. <laughs> yeah. And it was worth it because then I got the gold dust for that, like, the upgraded sword, which was super worth it. Yeah. But, oh my word. It's another cool little, like, no master sword, so you went with the gilded sword, which is... Even the Kokiri sword, the, like, that middle stage you have to have, I like that sword. 
Yeah, but um, yeah, the gilded sword is just weird. It's such a weird, cool sword. Yeah, I liked it. I could incorporate elements of gold in it, like you can feel the gold dust in the sword. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, yeah. Is there anything else about the medium? Mm, I think I think I'm good. Cool. We will we will move on then to our third and final listener question. Um which is what is your favorite mask and why? Uh, the Zora mask is my favorite mask because it's my favorite movement option in the game. I like Mikao's story. I like the way Zora Link looks. And the swimming is just, I think the swimming is so fun. Nice. Bunny Hood I get a lot of use out of. Um, Mask of Truth. Very just weird fun. Fun to play around with. Mm. Yeah, I like those. Nice. What's your favorite mask? The Goron Mask. I should let you go first, my bad. No, you're fine. (laughs) The Goron Mask. uh, Because it's my favorite movement option. Really? It's to roll around. You hated the races of the Goron challenges? Yeah. So it's like it was excruciating any time you had to use yeah. it seriously. I don't like to use... I like to use it in an open field. <laughs> okay. I don't like to use it in a confined space. Yeah. When you're Certainly just not with freaking Gorons that just rubber band back to yeah. wherever you are. I was winning the race. They can't just get faster. <laughs> yeah. Also, more respect should be given to the bump, I think. Like, they're just little Gorons. Like, we are spiked. We are a, a Goron hero. Yeah. Like, they should be feeling that hit. I should be winning that race. Yeah. Anyway. I, yeah, I like the movement option. I have I like Gorons in every iteration I've ever been in, so I like their look and just being around them. Uh, but I did use the bunny hood a ton. Yeah. Um, I used the bomb mask a decent amount mm-hmm. before I actually got bombs. It feels good. It feels like you're getting away with something. Yeah. That's what it felt like. Because <laughs> I got it so early, too. Yeah. I got it on one of my first couple of days because I ran into the lady. And so I definitely used that a couple of times. Nice, nice. Um, yeah. I thought the... Uh, is it the Keton mask? The I fox so. one? Yeah, something like that. I thought that was interesting because then I went and found one. I found yeah, a fox. Right. And I was like, is there one every time bushes run away from me? Because I know other places Yeah. the bushes ran away. Um, I thought that was cool. Yeah. Yeah, very weird, cool kind of thing. Yeah. But, but yeah, the Goron mask is mine. Gora one you get to play with a lot too. I, I think that yeah. the punches are so weighty mm. the slams feel good I feel like the satisfaction from just like dismantling that pillar is yeah. awesome oh there's something just weighty about it's it it's so cool yeah. it's, you feel so strong yeah it's really good Yeah, I really love that um, transformation master so good yes yeah I think my guess, my hypothesis here, most people probably would pick a transformation mask, is my guess. Yeah. Would you say you were, just a common complaint to see how you feel, yeah. did you feel like um, you were bummed by the lack of items in this game? Or did the transformation masks like make it up enough for you? Because like, if you think about it, literally every temple gives you an arrow, a bow, or some form of arrow, which is very different from how Zelda typically works. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't care. Um, yeah, I, I was fine with it. Mm-hmm. I, I think that the mask definitely made up for it for me. Yeah. I I still don't think I've played a ton of Zelda games. Okay. And so I don't know if that's because I'm not as well-versed in this arena. Mm-hmm. Um but to me, it didn't impact me all that much. I didn't okay. Think. Did you do you feel like a certain way about that? I, I think the transformation masks are so cool it more than justifies the limited item use. Yeah. I just cool. yeah, I'm all I, I love the transformation masks. 
well nice. worth the trade, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I definitely agree. So, that brings us to the last section, which is the moral. Mm-hmm. So, as you're probably aware, I think stories usually mean something. They usually say something. Um, so, what do you think the stories say? It's tough. It's a tough one. I just think it's like the, the words that you always hear to summarize this game are like bittersweet, melancholic. I think it really is like the mixture of light and darkness in the world and how they kind of like go hand in hand with each other. I think there's a lot of a lot of uh, storylines about accepting your own mortality. And uh, a lot of stuff about hope, I think, too, is important. Hope and compassion. Hmm. Those are kind of my big... The big themes that I see in this game. Yeah. I don't know where you want to start there. I'm thinking of... I Let's start with light and darkness. Okay. Um... Mainly because I thought of one, like, super clear, like, visual indication of that okay. in the two fairies that are quite literally a light one and a dark one. But mm-hmm. um, not that they, like, embody that, yeah. but that they signal that there's something there. Sure. As opposed, especially opposed to Ocarina of Time, there's one fairy who's light. Yeah. Um, but what do, you, what do you think it's saying about that light, darkness, togetherness, contrast, you know? I just think it's it's one of those things where it's like, to know, you know, you need to know suffering, to know happiness, like, the real compare and contrast, and it's just, the harshness of things, like, will often, like, push you into realizing how good they are as well. It's like when the girl meets up with her dad again, it's like, it was just so much misery that she suffered through for the eventual payoff of like a reunion and connection and light and it's like the lovers are both struggling in darkness the whole time just searching for the light at the end of the tunnel that connects them together and then you know we like all three of us together kind of do everything we can to make that happen and then that reunion is so satisfying yeah yeah and there is this, I, I think, all throughout it then, this idea of, I guess I'll say, I guess I'll say the necessity of sorrow. Okay. Um, like in, like, it's as a driving force to the hope mm-hmm. that they get to. But what were the other two things that you said? Uh, accepting your own mortality, I think, is a big part of this game. Let's do that one. I think this is kind of like the coolest, the most interesting one to think about for me because you like you're playing this game, and like as far as the residents of Termina know, well, those who come to accept it, they, like you don't have long to live. Like nobody is. It doesn't seem like they're operating on the same clock you are per se, but yeah, they know that the end is like they can see the moon getting closer, and it's just you're stuck in this moment of time and watching how people accept their own mortality and kind of how they go through with it. And it's interesting the range of emotions we can convey. Like I don't know if you did like if you like talk to the swordmaster a lot, but. Days one and two, he's like, I'll slice the moon in half. I'll take it out, no problem. I got this. Yeah. Or he's like, I'll tank the hit. My training has made me do it. But day three, if you go back near the end of the game, you can slice a plank of wood that is like leads to the back of his dojo. And he's like cowering in fear. Like, oh, just scared. Yeah. And so it's like he really couldn't accept it until it was inevitable. And that's when his true colors kind of showed. And I think with the idea that the world is going to end and it's it feels undeniable and it feels so sudden, yeah. you're kind of forced... The characters in the world are forced to um, think about what's important to them. And everybody in this world is basically thinking, who do I want to be with? What do I want to do? What needs to get done? 
and it's cool because as someone I mean you could die anybody could die any day I guess but sure if you're you're living in the world your moon the moon is probably not currently coming down to kill us all at this point I mean not today but you can still have the self-reflection of oh what's important to me yeah who do I want to spend time with what is what if it was all gonna end where would I want to be I think that is important to think about yeah yeah and I think that's huge just the acknowledgement to like we are on a clock like time right. is ticking it will not stop so you should really prioritize where you want to put like your love your talents your efforts yeah, yeah I mean Lord willing we have more than three days but <laughs> yeah and also that that's not because the moon grew a face and came down that'd be a bummer although that would end humans yeah um yeah, it's, uh, first of all, it's shocking that they think this is just going to affect Termina. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. And the implication, if you let it go, is that it was very widespread. Yeah. I never let it go. I don't <laughs> even know. It's too I, was, I was way too scared Never to even out of curiosity? You didn't let no, it go? Wow. I couldn't. That's even... where the anxiety kicks in. Okay. I couldn't do it. It's yeah. when that clock starts counting down. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think... I, yeah, and that's what I think is so cool about that Cafe and Andrew thing. Yeah. Where they're like, we're going to stay here together. And I know we've talked about the mailman mm-hmm. and his, like, finally being free yeah. from his duties. And so he spends the last, like, moments of his life frolicking yeah. in the in the uh, Termina field. Mm-hmm. Um, because this is how, like, he's free of his male duties which is just alarmingly real for my real life um (laughs) yeah yeah I really you know I felt the mailman on a lot of levels the letter he writes to himself is very human oh it's It's, real could have been a letter for me yeah and it's it's another one it just speaks to I don't know like routine and like trusting a higher power it's like he really he trusted the schedule. He was stuck on the schedule. Yeah. So it was like, even in the final moments, all he can put his hope and faith in, because all he's worked towards, is the schedule. Yeah. Which is like, it's really, it's sad, and it's just, I don't know, it's tough to think about. But yeah. he's a good, he makes you kind of think the other way, of like, oh, I I don't want to be like this. Like, I would much rather be like Cafe or Andrew. Like, I want to hold my loved ones close. Like, it's cool that he has these moments to frolic at the end, but he's still alone. Yeah. Because he prioritized the schedule. He's just free of that schedule, but he's not with people that he would right. care about. And maybe he doesn't care, but I don't know. I still feel like it would be better to die surrounded by loved ones if you can. Yeah, I mean, probably in life I would agree with that stance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it is important. It does speak to something about, like, real um, that we ought to think about is we have a clock too yeah that clock isn't just um here in the game um that affects us in a real way yeah so it's cool to think about Mm -hmm. and I don't know that and I think the plurality of characters that then we see yeah doesn't give us like an answer to what ought you to value like so much as it says determine what you value mm-hmm. and, and and like and act on that yeah and that that's important to preserve especially because it's limited mm-hmm. your time is not forever and for them it took the moon falling to you know ingrain that which would I mean would do it yeah I wouldn't I'd be like up oh, we're gonna die yeah but yeah it has to be a crazy three days if you're just like a regular resident of Termina yeah cause you've only experienced three days so then eventually just like giants show up hold the moon up for a little while and yeah that festival really does pop off yeah, it's a it's a good one. I mean, <laughs> that's you remember that one. Yeah, <laughs> I just um, 
but anyway, okay. So, but you mentioned the third one too. Mm-hmm. Just like the power of hope and compassion, I think is big. Yeah. Yeah, and I think we see that with a bunch of different characters. But is there like specifically examples that you thought of, or I just think there's a lot of examples of like you can do something really small and it can mean the world to someone. Like when I went down to the milk bar and I did the uh, the 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 stage check, like the sound check on that stage. Yeah. Like. I wasn't expecting to like shatter that Gorman brother's reality and like <laughs> yeah really messed him up. Open his mind as an artist and like take him back to a new age. Give him his like little ratatouille moment here where he's yeah freaking out in the bar. But <laughs> I good. just it feels good and it's there's just a lot of little moments where you can see just like what a small push like the power it had to really kind of shake up someone's reality. It's like even with that postman, it's like it's pretty cool that even if that guy exploded and died, that he was free because you gave him, you know, you gave him the letter, you told him like you let yeah. him go. Like it's cool that he went out like that. It's cool the lovers found solace in just being with each other. It's yeah. cool that you know Pamela reunited with her dad in the little, you know, the Gibdo scene. Just like from a minor to a major scale, it's just it's it's just cool. Cause it's like another it's like another uh, aspect of you see both sides of the good and the bad. It's like you really, if you know how bad something will be if you don't do it, it's extra rewarding to see how good it is. Yeah. And the game is also good at even when you don't know the outcome. Like I feel terrible for Lulu that she just is shattered by like losing her children and like that's yeah. great to give like to reunite and play that song for her is a really cool moment in the game or when Darmani like breaks down and you can see just the herd of Gorons that loved and respected him yeah like what that meant to him and what that meant to them and like just the cycle of like joy and power that will result from Darmani living the way he did mm. And like that's kind of taking up the mantle. Yeah. Uh, hope is hard. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like that. I what the f- the example that I really like that you mentioned was that um, the Goron brother in the bar. Because it seems very small. Mm-hmm. Like that I did the perform. You know, I put on that performance. It seems like a very small thing that affected him in a huge way. Yeah. Um, and I think that there's something about that that's that's true. I think a lot of times we'll interact with people in ways that either I will start out thinking this is kind of like nonchalant mm. or not very important, but could be. Yeah. And I'm just not aware, you know? Yeah. I'm not aware of how that how that interaction has gone to them. And what what that's provided them with. Yeah, it's a great. It's just like a cool statement of like, it's worth giving people the extra effort if you have it. If you got it in you, you can do it. It's like that's even go back to the link that like can't help himself. Yeah, it's cool to be a guy or girl who just like I'm doing this just because it's good. Yeah, the desire to help is cool. It is cool. It's cool to have, and I don't often have it. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, but I think that like, that is helpful, mm-hmm. and, and can, like, e- even if the material good maybe, like the the things that you can do to help others, yeah, you know. Even if that's not specifically what ends up providing this hope, sometimes it's just the interaction even mm-hmm. that can do that. And I, I think that this story shows that through a couple characters. Um, and definitely that the posture, like our posture, Link's posture, like should be oriented to I can do nothing but help. 
I want to. Yeah. I, I am compelled to, to assist others. Because that can make a huge impact, and it did in many of the characters' lives, and, and it does in real people's lives. Yeah. In, in our own existence out here. Yeah. That's pretty good. That was my favorite one of yours. Oh, yeah? Nice. I like that. Nice. I, I'm, I'm not very hopeful anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, I like thoughts about hope. Okay. Yeah, cool. They're nice to me right now. <laughs> Good. Um, did Did you have anything else on the morals? Things you thought that, that the story impressed upon you that you wanted to talk about? Or anything else at all about the story that you wanted to to talk about? Uh, like you go to wrap up? if there's no... I, I'll wrap this burger up. Okay. Well, you had Unless... Your, uh, yeah, you had favorite moments in the game. And I, I did want to know what yours was, but I'll say mine. You want to go first? You want me to go first? You go first because I don't know where I asked that. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, well, do you know your favorite moment of the game, or do you want to? Uh, do you want me to think while I say mine? I'm. I'm gonna think. Okay. Oh, okay. No, I do. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, I should think... ask you this during the plot. Oh, uh, gotcha. Okay. But please, this is good at the end. <laughs> That's more to say about it. Yeah, it's a cool what's closer. The moment? I think, like, maybe the most rewarding, like, relieving, just incredible, like, video game, like, congratulations screen I've ever seen in my life is just, like, when the screen goes all white and in black letters it says, Dawn of a New Day. That hits mm. me in such a good because it's just like you can finally breathe you can finally chill out yeah you can finally stop people can move forward and it's like we got all the masks so we get we get to see that everybody is so happy and cool and just like it just feels so good as a closer yeah and it's like because that you know 24 hours or three days remain two days like, that is such like we should have talked about some mechanics but I think that moment it's just so like good like yeah. good at conveying the spooky of what it's going for which again yeah. i feel like would only work in a video game like that wouldn't scare me in a movie no it's just like you really feel the weight of the time passing and just to know that you never like the people of this world never have to again and just i do like that it's like flipped that's white background with black text i love that screen yeah i think it's awesome it does, it like, I, I remember when I saw it. Yeah. There is something about it that I just like, you just go, whew. Like, yeah, the bell tolls like, for the final time. It's yeah. over. Yeah. you like, we're safe. Yeah. And we did get all the masks. And so, yeah, it does. I, now, do you, I don't know if you even know this. Does it, if I didn't get all the masks, right? Mm. If I just went to Majora and beat him. Does it not end the same? Like, do we not see all those things? Or I feel like the, there are definitely masks that if you don't get them, they, they just won't cut to that guy at the end. Gotcha. But I feel like, I don't, I don't know why I want to say that Cafe and Anju will always be there, but I feel like, I don't know. If I didn't do that side quest, I would be very confused. Yeah, true. And not that it can't be there. I mean, it could be. I just like very easy to start that quest but it's very hard to finish it yeah i don't know i'd have to look but i know for pretty much every other mask i don't know why i want to say that i don't know but yeah pretty much every mask if you don't get that guy that guy won't be in the credits like they will you will not know what happens to them huh that's interesting yeah that's a good that's definitely that moment definitely make, does dawn of a new day mm -hmm. definitely made me go whoo okay yeah. <laughs> it's yeah we made it it's awesome i so my favorite moment is also at the end. Okay. But I really like the... So they pan out on the log in the forest mm -hmm. that has, like, the mural of Skull Kid and Link. Mm -hmm. There's something about that image that I really like, especially having gone to the end of the game. Okay. I like that... Like, the implied friendship... Mm. And that this is somehow healed even Skull Kid in a way. 
um, so that Termina all around is better now having come out of the other side yeah there's something there's something to at least in my mind when I saw it to think that even the the troublemaker of, of Termina has now a friend has a guy like we won't be here again yeah yeah that's what I think it showed me mm -hmm. it's like they won't get here again yeah we've we've we fixed the problem and we haven't fixed the problem by like killing Skull Kid we fixed the problem by actually fixing by like befriending him yeah it's like the glimmer of hope again yeah which is really cool I mm -hmm. liked it yeah that was my favorite moment it's a good one I really like that I like yeah. that picture and anything that the happy mess salesman did or said yeah yeah I agree anything the ranch sisters did I liked Mikau like almost dying but then getting up and like playing a guitar solo to tell you how we got here is pretty cool <laughs> like and that. then dying and then dying immediately <laughs> after I is awesome I was very confused <laughs> yeah that was pretty cool anything I, with Majora is fascinating to me as well yes it's just so it's so weird and good and I love this thing yeah it's really cool mm -hmm. it, also, I don't know that I said this at all, but I, even when I was a kid, like years ago, when I saw like pictures of the game, mm -hmm. um, there's something about that mask that is very appealing to me. It's a great mask, yeah. It's It just looks very cool. Yeah, I agree. And the colors are interesting. Like, yeah. anyway, it's a cool looking mask. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, in most of the title cards for the game so they know it looks cool I'm guessing yeah big big pop culture item to have that mask I think yeah very cool piece to put on a shelf definitely yes before before we wrap this thing up did you have anything else to think about or going forward I think I'm good. I, yeah, no, just be be nice to people. You're gonna die one day, so <laughs> think about what matters to you. I was gonna cut it out, but I'm not now. <laughs> be nice to people. You'll die. Yeah, you're gonna be dead, so. You will die. It's a promise. Treasure your treasures, I guess. Fair. Cool. Well, so as we close here, I wanna let everybody know next month. Uh, I'm going to have my friend Nathaniel on, um, but it's going to be kind of different because it's actually a story I picked. Um, I did this. I picked the Prince of Egypt in January, and we've made it this uh, July will be the sixth month um, or the seventh month. <laughs> I can do math. We've done six. We've done half a year. Um, and so I get to pick another one. And so I'm picking for July, and I, we're going to watch the anime Gurren Lagann, which is my favorite show that I've ever seen ever. Um, so I'm really excited to, to go through that with him. Um, but if you have any questions, either about, you know, like things we talked about in this podcast, or definitely questions for me and Nate in the next podcast, you can email them to me at lifeslegendspod at gmail.com. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to Life's Legends. Please like, subscribe, comment, and until next time, savor your...